There were fireworks in London last weekend, but this, well, this is Super League Triathlon and there is absolutely no time to rest. Straight into round two here in Toulouse in the south of France. Big crowds already lining this very technical course in the middle of the pink city and 40 of the best in the world taking it on with crucial championship points on the line. The series is reaching its halfway point and the stakes get ever higher. SLT 2023, let's do it. Well, has gone. She has gone for it early. Alex Yi is having fun with it, and why not? From fifth to first, John LeHair is going to take it out. What a race for her. Alex Yi is your London winner. What a day in London. After all that, the RTP Global Sharks, well, they are well on top. A record single round haul of 148 points, leaving the other teams far, far behind. But they are without some of their big guns this weekend, whilst the Scorpions and the Eagles especially welcome back some point scorers and know that they have to eat into that lead. Two big races over the next two hours with the women up in about 10 minutes time. Let's take a look at the race format. The very first to ever feature in SLT six years ago, it was the triple mix, testing an athlete's capacity to work and to think. Three stages with short breaks in between, the traditional swim, bike, run first up, then run, bike, swim, and then finishing with bike, swim, run on a pursuit start. Plenty of opportunity to win it and to lose it as well. Now, the last run is two laps, which means the short shoots can be taken twice. A shortcut that can be earned by being first across the line in the opening swim, bike and run. Now, most of the field are backing up from London. So a short backup, but we also welcome some very big hitters for the first time this season. Even though we won the women's race, we still finished bottom of the table. But this week, we've got Christian Blumenfeld, the current Olympic champion, racing for the Eagles. I do think if I put it together and make it as hard as possible from the gun until the finish, I can be up there and uh, fight for the podium. We have Emma Lombardi, one of France's youngest talents, racing for the Eagles this week in front of her home crowd. I hope uh, the crowd will, uh, will really push me. Yeah, I, I want to, to do uh, my best and uh, yeah, I think it's really exciting uh, racing in your, in your home country. Uh, I hope it will give me a little bit more of energy. We've also got the current world champion, France's Leo Boger. It's so tough, so it's exciting also for us athletes to, to race. Yeah, it's good to be back and uh, I'm looking forward, especially on uh, home soil. And my leading man, Hollywood Hauser, is back with the Eagles. I was absolutely spewing to miss London last week. I know it was unfortunate, but we're back this week, baby, to lose um, round two and uh, we're looking to climb up that leaderboard. The addition this week of Leonie Paris is most probably a big advantage to us. The result uh, was bad for my team in uh, London. In Toulouse, the result will be better because uh, I'm here. Yeah, of course, this year we've got our star signing. Uh, the man we went after after last year's series championship that he took out, Hayden Wild. You know, we're here to be victorious this year. We've got the team to do it, so I think we're all prepared and we're going to give it everything. The Falcon, Hayden Wild, the big in for the Scorpions, and they're going to need it. My name is Will McCloy. Alongside me right now, Chris McCormack and Annie Emerson. Annie, how good is it to be here? Absolutely brilliant. I love this course. It's technical. It's tough. The weather conditions are amazing. Um, and, and we'll take a look at the leaderboard now, Will. Yeah, we can. Jean LaHare is well on top. We just heard from her. She will be looking to do it at her home in Toulouse. And don't forget, you can vote on who you think will be the person to do the job throughout. And could it be someone like a Fanny Zelaya to step up and add to her championship points? She picked up that one last time around. 
and it'll be very interesting to do so. Big crowd already here. Thank you so much to Marie du Toulouse and Toulouse Metropole and, of course, the Occitanie region who have supported and welcomed our champions, as have this amazing crowd. It will be really, really interesting to see how this one plays out. Look at the crowd already in transition, and it is an early morning race, which is something a little bit different as well, and we are very close now. As we see the QR code on the bottom right, make sure you use that to vote for who you think will win. It is time for the triple mix, and we're going to have a look at the start list in just a second. And there are stars all the way down this list. And Leonie Perrier, we heard from her. She joins the Scorpions along with Alice Beto, who comes in as well for the Sharks. All GBR. Kate Woff, great result last week, as did Olivia Matthias. Tilia Nima and Iona Miller uh, join Michelle Dillon's team. For the Warriors, a very different looking team. And for the Eagles, Emma Lombardi, former under 23 world champion. Look out for her, but it is time now to welcome out onto the black carpet our women's teams for the triple mix. Starting with the RTP Sharks, there is Liv Matthias, fastest or second fastest swimmer last week, had a great top 10. Tilia Nima on debut, as is Iona Miller who joins her. Jess Fulliger, seventh last week, and Kate Woff is last of all the 2022 world champion. There's Fulliger who comes out. And Woff, who finished fifth in the breakaway run, picked up swim points, picked up bike points as well, and 21 overall. And Michelle Dillon is sitting down with Rebecca Charlton, the manager. Michelle, a bit of a different team composition today. What can we expect from this lineup of the Sharks? Well, my team's super excited to be here in Toulouse racing. The crowd is sensational. We've lost a couple of key athletes uh, from the weekend, but that's not going to stop us from putting in a massive fight today to stay at the top of the leaderboard. We can't wait to see it. Good luck today. Thank you. Oh, she's very smug, Michelle Dillon, and why not? She doubled everybody else, but the Santara Tech Eagles welcome in a big new name. But we start with Ekaterina Shabalina, raised in Siberia, now races for Kazakhstan. She's last year's South Asian Games winner. She'll be looking for a better result, as will Julia Hauser, the world number 49. So much experience for the Austrian. Fanny Zalai comes out, having finished 15th, and Jean Leher. A big cheer for her. Plenty of people from Toulouse backing her. And the 2021 Under-23 World Champion, Emma Lombardi. And the manager, Tim Don. Tim, looking very, very handy on paper. How confident are you today? You know, the, um, the women have prepared really well. Having Emma Lombardi and Jean Lahair with the home crowd here, they're going to get right behind us. Um, but, you know, they just need to execute the small things right and, um, you know, go the Eagles. Good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. RTS Warriors. The RTS Warriors, the all-American team. Big changes for them. Erica Ackerland is back, having debuted last week. Former North American under-23 champion. Victoria Lopez, the super swimmer, is here from Brazil. Second in the swim rankings for Super League Triathlon. Jimena De La Pena, second in the World Junior Champs in Hamburg. Look out for her. Megan Foley comes back. And Taylor Spivey, one of the few who have raced all five seasons, she will be looking for a race win. And the manager, Nick Chase, is down there with Becca right now. Nick, triple mix format today, a little bit different. What are you expecting your strengths to be for the team today? This course is one of the, our favorite in the circuit. Purpose built for a warrior mindset. So our women are going to come out there and be fierce competitors. Look for a lot of points scored on the individual level. So. Thanks for the support. We love being here. We love having you. Good luck. Thanks. Purpose built for a warrior mindset. I love that American flavor. And now the Bahrain Victoria Scorpions led by Verena Steinhauser. Super consistent athlete, the Italian. Nicole Vanderkay joins her as well. It was ninth in London at her second Super League series, which had plenty of top tens. The Kiwi. Elite Beto, the veteran, coming back from her son, born in November. Barbara de Koenig from uh, the Netherlands, a front pack swimmer, so look out for her at 20 years of age. And another home favourite, Jean Leher, the mixed team relay world champion. And alongside them, Michael Gilliam. How much of a sting are the Scorpions going to have today, MG? I don't know how much of a sting we're going to have, but we're here to rub a dub dub in the little hub called Toulouse. <laughs> Thank you as ever, and big good luck to the Scorpions. 
You never know what you're going to get with MG, and that's what makes him such a joy to watch. And not too long now until this starts, as the drone flies over the river here in Toulouse. It is the triple mix, starting with a swim, bike and run. Every second lost in stage one and two is paid for in stage three, in the pursuit start, and it is time to get underway here in Toulouse. Beautiful shot from the drones that heads out over the water, and a pretty Easy start, very different swim this time uh, to the confines of West India Key. And there is a little bit of current in this water coming towards us. So the Scorpions here on this side have a little bit of a longer swim to the first turn, which is about 125 metres out into the water. A second turn and then the full 300 metres back in as we welcome Chris McCormack into the telecast. And it was a fast start by the, I think it's the inside there, is the a warrior and a shark head to head. Scorpions was the wrong side. Yeah, I expect to see the Sharks take this swim out pretty hard. We've got Olivia Mathias and Kate Wolf and, of course, Jess Fulliger, really, really strong swimmers. So no surprise to see uh, the blue costumes up there of Michelle Dillon's Shark team. You watch this first swim, boy, because that current's running from the top of the bridge all the way down. So coming around this first swim boy is going to be very, very congested. And we saw last year it was that swim boy that really split the swim up. But there was a lot of discussion amongst the teams in the team meetings was getting out to this first swim boy with clear water. And it looks like the right side with the Sharks yeah. and the Warriors have got that advantage, having that current to work with. It's going to be an absolute smash up at this first turn, boy, as they're going to push each other towards the boy. But if you can be out in that front water, which it looks like... Taylor Spivey, it looks like. Spivey, yeah, Spivey on the inside, and then maybe potentially Waffle Matthias on the outside as the others fight their way to turn, and that's when things can really string out. And all of these seconds, as we say, obviously it's a three-stage race, but you lose some time in the first stage, you pay for it at the back end, and they'll just be lucky that these two are going shoulder to shoulder and not really trying to put pace into the group. The difficulty here is they're punching straight into that swim current. As they turn now, it'll take them to the left with the current, so the athletes sitting on their back have the advantage. It's whether they can move up now to score those valuable swim points and chase that short shoot. Yeah, be interested to see where Victoria Lopez is from the Warriors. She's uh, joined the team this week, a super, super swimmer. It's probably Lopez there, not yeah. Spivey. Well, that's Lopez on the front. Is yeah. Spivey sitting third or it, vice versa? Exactly. Difficult to see in the water here, yeah. but uh, it was Matthias who, out of all these athletes, had the fastest swim last week. So we'll see exactly where they are when they come out of the water. It is, as it was last week, a couple of Warriors and a couple of Sharks at the front followed by the Scorpions as well, as we're going to head down now to Rebecca Charlton, who is with Nick Chase, who will be enjoying this. All right, we will wait for that one as we uh, continue to look at the swim as they head in for the last 50 metres. And already big gaps at the back there. You can see one of the sharks, I think it is, struggling along at the back as our women look to get out of the water. And I think it is Victoria Lopez, who, as we mentioned at the top of the program, is second overall in the history of swim rankings. And it is Lopez out of the water and alongside her and slipping. Spivey and Matthias. Was Matthias, who loses a little bit, but Spivey's had a great swim there. Livy Matthias, Alice Beto, Kate Woff, another shark. Fanny Zelaya's had a great swim. She's sitting in sixth position, just ahead of her Eagles teammate, Jean Leher, and Tilia Nima, her debutante, finishes 11 seconds back as they keep heading out of the water, and already things are tough for Iona Miller. The only Perio's had Way a difficult back. swim, 23 seconds back from Jess Fulliger and Yamina Della Pena, and it's a slow transition onto the bike. The Warriors short shoot taken. Lopez grabbing that. Taylor Spivey out second. This will be an important first lap. They come up, make this right-hand turn, come up a tight hill. We saw last year some of the athletes opting not to put their shoes onto the top, which is a smart move to do. Get the gap open. This is a, a course is very, very difficult to pass on. Very technical bike course. 
Clever here from Lopez, who hasn't bothered putting her feet in the shoes. She's going to get up this hill. We saw that in the men's race. We saw athletes like Hayden Wild do that last year. Steal a little break on the field, be able to take their own lines into the corners and maybe just sit up and wait for the group to come rather than having to do the work up the hill to catch up. So Lopez, Spivey, Woff, Lahair, Matthias and Beto sitting together. And Zelaya's dropped a couple of seconds back, but a, a group of about four or five now as the Sharks take a turn on the front, and this is just like what happened last week. These little groups to get away on this course would be tough, especially when you put Woff in. We saw her last week in London, very aggressive on the bike. I saw her going over the course with her partner, Max Stapley. She was really excited about the technicality of it, and little groups can stay away. It's very hard to close it down, so transitions will be critical. That's been the common thread amongst all the team managers moving through transition fast. It was interesting looking at the athletes, the new athletes that have come on board this week. Lombardi, 16 seconds down. I would have thought she would have been further up the field. All right, we'll head down now to Becca, who is with Nick Chase of the Warriors. Nick, a really, really strong start out there for Taylor Spivey. How is she feeling coming into today? Because we know we, she was uh, struggling a little bit with an injury last week. Taylor is going to play today by ear. She's going to do what's best for her performance, but of course, scoring those points, getting the short shoots with her and Victoria, and getting everything we can out of this race is what matters to us as the Warriors. They're coming through. We'll let you focus, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. And as Nick was speaking there, Kate Wolf has stolen a march on her competitors. Lahair has made up great time in the first lap, but she sits in second in that group. But Kate Wolf is right off the front, and she's looking for that bike short shoot for the Sharks. We know the Warriors picked one up with Victoria Lopez and a great work it was too with Taylor Spivey finishing second so potential swim points for those two but Woff wants that bike short shoot which comes at the mount line after transition at the end of this bike and if she can hold this off she will pick that up and potentially come away with one of the quickest bike times as well. I think Woff wants more than the short shoot. I think she's yeah. in the overall on the day. She came in here with intention. She landed in Toulouse off a lot of confidence from London. And she's made a, a dynamic move to get away from this group. We saw, we saw Hayden Wild last year get away on this course. That section down on the river, there's a bit of a vacuum off the wall. And they can really use the motorbike in front to get back out. So Woff, Leher, Matthias, Lopez, and then a full 10 seconds back to the next group. as these three sit in. So after the work Lopez has done, she's sitting in the back on the bike, just recovering as we look at the QR code bottom right. Who do you think's going to win this one? Predict now using the QR code. And the results will be up on the screen very soon. And if you're not looking at Kate Woff, well, potentially you should be. She's just about doubled her advantage on this lap. It's uh, as we saw last year, um, thinking of Georgia Taylor-Brown when she just rode away with it. It's a really difficult course here in Toulouse to work in a group, and it's much easier to ride away. Woff coming into this race so strong. She's so experienced in Super League racing now, racing every single race last year, but a different athlete coming here this year. Much stronger and much more experienced. Look, at 11 seconds, remember this is a pursuit start for Stage 3. She's She's been either instructed or she's feeling great to absolutely lay the hammer down on this first on this first section and she's opened that gap and she is gone absolutely gone banking banking time for the stage three pursuit start kate woff right now will be very happy with where she is sitting of course there is a three minute gap where they can recover between stage one and stage two and it'll be back to back runs and the field is coming up to this three and closing the gap now on that leading three as we head down now to Michelle Dillon, who'll be very happy with Kate Woff. A significant gap out there currently for Kate Woff. <laughs> Must be pretty <laughs> delighted with that stuff. Oh, I'm actually shaking a little bit because I knew she was going to go hard on the bike, but this to be in front this significant so early in the race is just phenomenal. I'm just so happy for her. She's got so, her bike skills are phenomenal as well and she's really using those to her advantage on this course today. Michelle, thank you. Thank you. Woff actually won the 2022 20, Under 23 World Championship off a bike breakaway. That one was with Jess Fulliger, who's one of her teammates now, but right now she is all by herself, the 24-year-old, and just showing her technical bike yeah. skills because 
And, and Maki, you'd know this, like, you look at this as constant changes of surface, constant off-camber corners, constant little punchy climbs. It really suits a technically proficient rider. But she, she, you see her changing those gears. She's using her gears to use to get through the course. She's railing those turns. She's by far superior with her skills. She's opened this up to 15 and a half seconds. And you watch her, she's riding the rails as she comes off those turns, using the entire road to get around that turn and not losing any speed. It's impressive as she comes off that fast flat section on the river, flicking through her gears and keeping that cadence high. And that's the damage. She's, uh, she's really setting this up. And Spivey, who we know he can ride a bike, is the one on the chase. Steinhauser from the Scorpions got on the back, which was a big ride from her after being a fair way down in the swim. Yeah, that could be crucial as well as this one unfolds. But this is the chase group, if you like, with Spivey, Matthias, and last week's winner, Lahair on the front of it and doing plenty of work. Yeah, you're right, Steinhauser crossing the gap there. Fulliger doing the job as well. And then a further five seconds back to the group led by Lombardi and Erika Ackerlands. But they are seeing already time now disappearing. And looking down the other end, Yumena de la Pena, who... Her main goal coming into this one was to beat Fanny Zelai at the Rats right Zelai's 12, as it looks like someone's come off here. That's Spivey. One of the Warriors. I don't think it's Spivey. No. We'll confirm who that is. It's tough to see the number as into transition and just about definitely taking the bike short shoot will be Kate Woff as long as her transition is clean. In it goes. Of course, we can see the manager there, Michelle Dill, and Bark Instructions. Michelle will say, take it easy, put some time. It's a 1K run now. Bank that up. Get through this. You'll win this stage. You'll take the short shoot now. That'll right. be valuable. Yeah, Michael Thompson, race director, holding up the shark sign for the short shoot. Of course, a bit of a trouble there for Matthias. Doesn't rack her bike correctly. Has to go back again. That short shoot can be given to anyone in the Sharks, as can the Warriors one. Still more problems for Matthias. She's losing the pack. The hair is out. Spivey, Spivey is, is out, out, and she has stopped running. She's been dealing with an ankle injury, and that could be her race done. Taylor Spivey, wow. who finished third last week, who was in the box seat, really, without any Beth Potter or Sophie Colwell to win this one, has pulled out on the run. Well, she talked about it last week. She did mention a bit of pain in the lower leg last week, so obviously preferring to sit out this one. She did so well in London last week when she finished third. And the athletes, of course, only having to race two races and the final to count in the overall series. So maybe sensibly sitting the run out here if she's feeling some pain as we watch Woff uh, running almost away with this in this early stages of this race. But Jan Leher not letting her get too far down the road. Yeah, Jean Lahair, one of the fastest run times last year, was the quickest out on course last week. Can she run this down? That is the big question. The Sharks and the Warriors with the short shoots. The run short shoot still up for grabs. Now, Kate Woff can't win a second short shoot for the Sharks, but she can deny the Eagles and the Scorpions from picking one up. A little look behind from Lahair, but she knows she has to limit this damage lest she lets Kate Woff get away with it. You're not going to let Kate Woff get away with it. As you said, stage three is off a pursuit start. Time matters. You're going to see every woman in this chasing bunch fight for time. They're not going to ease up. This is interesting. Verena Steinhauser from Italy leading that chase pack. And I just noticed Le Leonie Perio tucked in there as well. She lost a huge amount of the swim. Not sure what's happening here. This is not looking great. That was a crash, maybe. Off that bike. So Woff heads under the bridge, and now she is down at Riverside, coming back in to end stage one. We head down now to Becca Charlton, who is alongside Taylor Spivey. Taylor, we had a chat in London. I know how much you were suffering with injury. Is that what's ultimately forced you out today? Yeah, I made a decision with my coach to not do the run here today, and and it was tough to just see it, like come out here knowing that I wasn't going to do it. But I think it's the right decision for the races later in the season. And it's so important that you keep that overview because pushing it today could put you out in the future. Yeah, it's either finish this race and put set me back, or you know prioritize Malibu and Neom later on. We'll let you rest. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. 
Interesting there that, uh, oh, there's the shark in the background on the right-hand side. Interesting there that um, Spivey said she knew she was going to do this. So she's driven three hours from her hometown, knowing she came to get points for the team. Likely six points for the swim. We'll see as Woff picks up the last short shoot, denying the Eagles and the Scorpions, and then looks around and thinks, how much time have I put into this group? The time is ticking from as soon as she crosses the line as Spivey consoles Jimena de la Pena, who I think was eliminated earlier on. Lahair, 12 seconds the gap between last week's winner from the Eagles and last week's fifth place getter. Van der Kay, Perio and Steinhauser all do well at the back end. Zalai had a great run to finish seventh in that one, 26 seconds back. Fulliger, Alice Beto is there. Lopez, who fell back after that great swim, probably picked up the swim points. They can do a quicker swim in the second stage. And Tilia Nima, 14th overall, 40 seconds back, covering the top 14. So already we're seeing the field just about blow apart. And that time is ticking. The time, the three minutes, starts from when the first person crosses the line. So if you cross a minute back, you've got less time to recover. It's really brutal, this format, isn't it? That's a tough day at the office. <laughs> <laughs> But it starts with a run now. So you've come off a big, hard one-kilometre run, and now you've got to kick off this second stage with a run start. Completely different feeling of an, a triathlon event, finishing with a swim. Off though, she looks calm and controlled as Foley crosses the line, and then Shabalina crosses the line, and they're going to have much less time, and they're going to be on the verge of being eliminated by the 90-second rule, very close in the second stage, whereas Woff looks look calm and composed, projecting exactly what she wants to project here. Okay, such a strong start to stage one. How was it out there? Yeah, I didn't even realise I had a gap, to be honest. And then I realised I had one, and I just like kept my head down and just went for it and tried to get every second round, every corner I could, and yeah, just keep pushing, get every second. And just quickly, how do you refocus now? Just forget about that one. This one's a new set, so just give everything into this one and, yeah, we'll focus on round two. We can't wait to watch it. Thank you so much. All right, taking control there was Kate Woff. 12 seconds, big gap as we look back. And Taylor Spivey picked up some important speed on the swim. Picked up the short shoot, did Victoria Lopez. But by the time they reached the end of the bike, it was all about Kate Woff, who put a lot of time, 15 seconds or so, into her competition. And picked up two of the short shoots as well. Crossed the line, 12 seconds in front and 22 seconds in front of third. And they line up now for stage two. It's been three minutes. For Woff, it's been less for everybody else, and this time it is run first, which means back-to-back -back runs, and this is where we can see things yeah. really uh, blow out. Oh. I'd expect to see the likes of Lombardi and Perio really take this out hard. They've got to pull back some time if they want to come back into this race and in contention for a podium position. But at the moment, Kate Wolf just looking so in control. Well, as we saw in that first race, getting into transition quickly off this first run can enable you to get that gap on the bike, which is critical to set up that last swim. So this run will be red hot. Run bike swim, Tim Don, the Eagles manager, and Nick Chase, the Warriors manager, and we're underway again. to get a fast start off the line, cannot get caught up, and they are sprinting up the hill as Lahair tucks the goggles back in, and it's full gas from the gun. Again, Kate Woff put herself in the right position, didn't she? Straight off that corner, up near the front, up against some super runners. Leonie Periol came from the back in that last race to put herself in the what, fourth across the line, so she's capable of a huge run. We know that from her results in the past. She's opting to sit back and maybe get through this carnage early and open up on that bottom section. Interesting watching some of the athletes choosing to wear the swim hat during the run. It's pretty hot out there. I don't know if I 
that's a sensible decision or not. It certainly makes it a lot easier because it can be tough when you're running at a three-minute kilometre pace to try and get your hat and your goggles on. But, but you've got to swim last, so you've got to get through the bike as well. It's strange to opt to put that swim cap. That means you're going to put it over your helmet. Yeah, over the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Just, surely you'll overheat during that because it is, as you say, hot and sticky. Anyway, three eagles in the top five as the lie tacks onto the back of this one. Lombardi there as well in fourth position. But Lahair knows that she has one main competitor out there right now, and she's right behind her. Lahair, second last stage, and Woff winning the stage. Lombardi, Zalai, and then a host of Scorpions coming in as well. But Tim Don, Eagles manager, will be very happy. Let's find out. Tim, stage two, of course, have just got underway. You're in a very strong position. Absolutely. Jean really wants to get those run points um, for the team and then obviously for the overall series. She had a great first leg. Um, swimming's not her strongest and she put herself in a great position. You can see Emma Lombardi is also working her way up there. I think together they're going to work well on the bike. And it looks like she is just about extending that lead out there, Tim. Got to watch out for Kate Woff. She's riding amazing at the moment. So if she can catch her, that's great for us because they can work together to distance themselves for everyone else. Thank you. Leonie Perio with a fantastic downhill run with the hair off the front. Close that gap on Woff, knowing that there's safety in numbers with these three. She can get that gap and close in on, on Jean Lahaire. Yeah, there's a real art to running downhill, isn't there? Some people think it's the easy part, but if you don't know how to do it technically well, you can lose a lot of time or gain a lot of time, as we're seeing. But Jean Lahaire at the moment looking absolutely amazing. She's so full of confidence after that victory in London last week. Yeah, French won too, and down the hill went Lahaire and just gapped them. She, the question now is, though, what does she do on this bike? Does she come back to the group or does she try and do the whole thing solo like Woff did? Obviously, it worked for her. Great shot as the drone follows along. Right. Look, the advantage of that group behind is you have Kate Woff there and she's going to work very, very hard on that bike and potentially close the gap for you. So it's a, a great decision of that group behind to stay tight. <laughs> well, they come in off the one lap run and it is right at the end for the Eagles and the split three seconds. Off they go. Great transition from Perio. She'll come out towards the front as will Lahair. So, French 1-2 in, French 1-2 out. Bit of a problem with the buckle for Lahair. So she loses the front spot and that work she did on the run has evaporated. She comes out right beside her main race rival, Kate Woff. And now Woff is a fantastic swimmer, so if she can stay with Lahair, she'll feel like she can definitely protect that 12-second lead. Great little group here up front. Lahair, Perio, Lombardi and Woff, four excellent bikers, it really is. And this is a little bit of a breakaway group for me. Fanny Salai sitting in fifth place a couple of seconds back. She doesn't quite have the skill or the experience, obviously, at the age of 15, I think, to go with this little group. And that group behind is Steinhauser and Vanderkay from the Scorpions. Steinhauser, a massive bike rider, potentially could close that gap. And we have a, a Scorpions three in that front group, which would be lovely. Not letting go of the Scorpions' roots is Chris McCormack. Now he's in the commentary box. Not even a little bit as these three out the front continue to dominate this course. Four now. Sorry, Perio, Lombardi and Woff. So Lombardi, we haven't talked about her as much. She comes in as a debutante for Super League Triathlon, but she comes in... She's so young, but already with such an incredible pedigree. Oh, she really has. She's had six consecutive top tens in the World Triathlon Championship Series. She got third in the European Championships last year. She's a former world under-23 athlete, and I tipped her to make the podium here today, but she struggled on the first round for some reason, and that's an experience, because I think some of these athletes coming into this off the back of Olympic distance racing have no idea just how quick the pace is. Well, they're railing this bike ride. Lahair finding it very tough. She struggled for that technical section. When Kate Woff came up, moved around to chase down Periol on the front, Lahair really struggled for that technical section. Yeah, they are putting time in, and you think your winner will come from this group of four. Woff obviously with the advantage of 12 seconds, but they are not taking their foot off the gas one bit, and a big crowd enjoying all of this as they come through transition again. On to the second lap of the bike, and it is a morning race, but it hasn't stopped the crowds from coming out. And we've had wonderful support from Toulouse Metropole and Marie de Toulouse for the city and for the region, of course, the Occitanie region, uh, have put big support behind this race, which is fantastic. And, and these champions of the sport have felt welcome all throughout the week.
here in Toulouse, which is just a magical city with a, a great vibe, and we are right in the middle of it here as Woff leads them down the technical section. And what you don't realise is, is that just how steep that is. So there's quite a steep drop off there. It doesn't show really as well here. And that corner is, if you can hit it on the inside, it's a nice on camber corner. But if you go a bit too wide, suddenly it, get, it drops off quite steeply. So the technical aspects of this course is it, it, it can't be underestimated. And these women are making it look easier than it is. Kate Woff is railing this bike. He put on the only program under, under stress. and. Jean Lahair again struggling through that technical section, leaving a gap that could open up right now. Kate Woff is gone. All right, so it comes down to eagles and sharks, and there's a scorpion in there. So we've got two of the managers head to head alongside Rebecca. Tim, <laughs> just chasing Tim Don over here. It looked like Jeanne Lahair had a really neat transition, but then she looked to struggle with her helmet strap. What, what happened? I didn't actually see that because Emma was coming in and Fanny, so I was more focused on them. But she's carrying on racing, and you always race to the, to the line and to what the top official says. It's so tight out there, Michelle. Kate Wolf putting in a fine performance. I want to see her on top of the podium today. I think we can do it. I'm going to give her the short shoot just to make sure that we, we get that, hopefully, that win. Fingers crossed. Not over till it's over. Never over. Home crowd advantage. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Don will claim any advantage he, really he possibly will. can, won't he? He really will. So uh, just it's... looking at this, actually, really sorry to interrupt there, Macca, but Jess Fulliger has ridden up to this group. Because Kate Woff sat up. Kate Woff sat up, took, sick of doing the time on the, on the front. It's put John LaHare back into play, and Jeff, Jess Fulliger's ridden straight onto the back of this group. That was a tactical error, I believe, so, from the uh, two on the front. Well, she doesn't have to worry about her so much on the run because Jess still has a lot of work to do on her run. But I was interested before as well that La LaHare was really struggling on the technical she was sections. Gone. But you're right. I think Woff has sat up, and she's allowed them all to come back together again well she's got she's sitting on a 12 second buffer going into the pursuit start and she probably looks around at the swimmers and goes I, I can cover that yeah you're right so i'm probably happy going into the final stage pursuit start with a 12 second buffer i can stay away so that is the question erica ackerland who's really the only warrior left in play will pick up the warriors short shoot that will not affect this group so Woff also will know because her name will go up on the board and there it is it's about to go up on the board that not only does she have a good swim not only does she have a 12 second buffer she also has a short shoot the only one in the leading pack. The ones that should have capitalised on that were, were um, um, Periol and, and and Lombardi. They had the gap. They've, they needed that distance on, on La Hare. They lost in that first round. They had the opportunity to pull back some of that time. And when Woff sat up, they should have come around and put down the hammer. They had the gap that could have been the deciding gap to close that time loss. I think Lombardi is quite a threat still. Uh, yeah, I but do too. speaking out of term against Woff because she is by far the quicker runner. Woff has just been outstanding so far in the first stage and in this stage. But Lombardi now has found her legs. She's got the home crowd behind her and she's capable of put, swimming with Woff but also putting in a good few seconds. And let's not forget, the last stage is two laps, so it's two kilometres yeah, and not one. That's very true. First two stages are a one kilometre run. This, the last stage is a two two laps of a one point, I think it's 1.05 kilometres. It'll be a bit less for Woff though, because she gets to take the short shoot twice. <laughs> so 34 seconds covering the top 18, and those times will all be added to the time differences from stage one. And there will be some athletes that will not start stage three based on their combined times, because once you're 90 seconds back, you are eliminated from the race. What we haven't talked about is this, this last swim to finish this stage. They've had, this is the, what, the fifth discipline they've gone through. This was a tough bike. We know Kate Woff can swim, but there's, you know, Leonie Perry, I was not renowned for a big swim. Either Jean Lahair. They need to get through this transition on fatigued, a fatigued body makes this so, so difficult. It's such a tough thing to do, swimming after, swimming and bike, uh, running and biking. Nick Chase will be a little unhappy with how the Warriors have gone. There's three right down the bottom. Spivey's obviously pulled out. Galapena eliminated. And Megan Foley is on the bubble too at this point. Tim Don, on the other hand, picking up plenty of points as they head out for the last discipline in stage two, which is a 300 metre swim. And it's a group of five who will work together. And sitting there, I think, in basically no man's land was Rena Steinhauser. And we'll be looking swimming on her own. Tardy, Tardy from Lombardi. So yeah, that Lahair put herself in the right position right on Kate Wasp's feet. Tardier from Fulliger, who has just lost it completely. 
Oh, my word. Steinhauser, straight pass, just not organised enough, Jess Pulliger. And we've seen it happen before. In fact, this time last year, Johnny Brownlee nearly dived in with his helmet on. So it happens <laughs> to the best of us. That was a classic, wasn't it? Watching him so happy with himself, legging it down to the swim with his uh, helmet on. But I think when the athletes are in the red like they are continuously in this sort of racing, I think that mental power as well, you lose it because you, you lose the ability to be able to think properly. So Woff out the front, and she was the, she's probably the strongest swimmer in this group. So she'll sit on the front. The others will look to stay in and not lose any more time, although... The hair's tagged those feet. The hair yeah. put herself into that position. She got straight on Woff's feet after transition, and that's the best seat in the house. She'll get towed all the way along, especially as they make that left with the current, punching them straight into the face. Yeah, we've seen the current. People struggle with the, the, uh, the current a little bit, and... You can see the gaps there now 44 seconds once they got through transition so it blew out another 12 seconds so Woff needs to measure it way in as we look at the podium predictions there are still people who are backing Lombardi there are people who are backing Lahair after what she did last week but Woff is in the box seat and the Warriors struggling the Scorpions though picking up some points let's head down to Michael Gilliam the team manager MG, you're stood by Perriot's bike here, and she's well up there in the swim. Yeah, but um, not as good as we have to be, but better than London. Um, maybe we'll be better in the third round. We're getting better with the ladies as we go. MG, we'll let you go. Thank you. That's his version of putting a positive spin on things, oh, I think, At times, I think, wow. <laughs> so motivational, MG. So <laughs> motivational. <laughs> but I tell you what, look at Steinhauser. Steinhauser's She's having, having an absolute cracker, as is Van der Kay. Yeah. They put themselves in the hunt. Leone's right up the front. She benefited from that group away. We've got a long day of racing to go. This pursuit starting in round three. But I think the, the women are really putting a lot at front here. And Kate Woff's having a phenomenal performance today. She's just dominated every discipline she's done. She's been there in the run and her swim has been remarkable. I think just being up there with Sophie Colwell and Beth Potter last week, yeah. all, all, of the, all of the Sharks were up there, but knowing that she could run with them until just towards the end yeah. would have given her a big shot of confidence. And then Colwell and Potter sit this one out and come back in Malibu. And she's thinking, I'm the most experienced. I'm the one that can lead this team. And she, she did that from the first lap of the bike. Sat in on the on the swim, I had a great swim and then just took off and hasn't been headed since then. And she'll protect her lead coming into stage three. And I think that's this is going to be just like her partner Max Stapley did last week, also for the Sharks. You know, he had a big confidence boosting uh, race, finished fifth overall, but led for large portions. And now uh, Kate's doing the same thing. She's just been passed. Yeah, by Lombardi. Gone by Lombardi. So she's just been overtaken yeah. by Lombardi. I think La Hare is just hanging on. And actually, Perio has had a decent a great swim. swim. Yeah. A great swim for Leone. Because as you said, that's the toughest swim that they're going to face yeah. In, yeah. In, the, in the triple mix. All right, this last part, extremely important. La Hare needs La Hare. to get out quick and try and take some of that time back. Swim. Just get one second, Tim Don. Push, 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 push. Try and take a second back. That's going to count. Make the turn, head up the finishing chute. And Woff knows that she needs to limit this. And there's some big cheers for La Hare. Woff sticking in behind, though. Maybe it'll be half a second. And that might just help. In fact, it was exactly half a second. Lombardi off the back, comes across the line. She loses a little bit more time. And a good swim from Leone Perio for the Scorpions, who crosses in fourth for this stage. And will get the pursuit start times as soon as possible. But a little add to the advantage for Kate Woff. Matthias in fifth, 20 seconds in arrears. I wonder what this discussion is. It's, I'm hearing that there's a disqualification potentially for La Hare. Ooh. We'll find out why and what happened there, but she does not look happy. Oh, that's huge. That's, uh, I'm hearing it's hel the helmet came undone or the helmet wasn't done up. Oh, that's huge. She's been a major player in this racing. And let's have a look back and see exactly what happened. But there is only one way you can really get disqualified in Super League Triathlon Racing. Everything else is a penalty, and that is for not having your helmet done up properly. So she's gone to do it up there. Oh, it's, undone. it's undone there. And then she stopped. If it's undone as she crosses the line, it's a DQ. It's, it's looks, not undone it's as not she undone. crosses the line. Wow. It looked like it came undone, but she stopped before the line and did it up. So 
Yeah, that's an interesting one. We'll get clarification on that, or we'll try to, because she only took about three steps with it undone before she stopped. She's out. So the rule must then be that you cannot take your bike off the rack without having your helmet done up first. Yeah, maybe that's it. I think that, that is the rule. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the rule in uh, triathlon. Um, oh, that's terrible news. Yeah. Oh, and you can see Let's that open she's this extremely race right unhappy up. because this is her home race. And Kate Woff will be thinking, this is not the way I want to win it, but it's just gotten easier. She's going to have an enormous lead over the, of the chasing bunch now. It's only La that put herself in, in between that, her and the big group of about four women. Well, that is a tough decision for uh, the ref to make, but uh, without a doubt in World Triathlon, that is the case. If you take your bike off the rack without your helmet done up, uh, that's it. It's a DQ, and we can just see Tim Don now trying to console La Hare, and this is, uh, this is a really difficult uh, situation. Jean well, it's a game of inches, Super League Triathlon. We've seen it happen to people time and again, and it only took a few steps. And that's what ended Lahare's home race. As we get ready for stage three, and we'll find out what the gaps look like, and right at the front is the Brit, Kate Woff. Let's have a look back at how stage two played out and rocketing down the hill was the Lahare who knew she had a 12 second gap to make up on Kate Woff and that was the moment. That point right there and you can see on the right of your screen the race director telling Lahare there's going to be an issue and of course there was at the end of the stage. Woff was looking around, saw Lombardi on her shoulder, Lahare caught back up to that group eventually and in the mix finally seeing a scorpion near the front was Leone Perio. Time was made up and time was very much lost at this stage. Jess Fulliger saw her race disappear into the Is distance of the Garonne. struggling to see without and a screen. She was struggling to put her swimming cap and goggles on. And when it came to the swim, it was Lahare and Woff at the back end of the race. But Woff continued. Lahare DQ'd straight after, which leaves Woff with, I think, a 30 second. Huge gap to the rest of the field. That's a real tragedy. All right, so that is how it all stands. And I, I, if my maths is correct, and we'll find out in just a second, it's 30.2 seconds between Wolf and the rest of the field, led by Lombardi. That's huge. You know, with with, <laughs> with that disqualification, it opens it right up. Jean, Jean Lahair was the only aggressive racer outside of yeah. Wolf that was setting this race up. She swam amazingly for an, an athlete who's renowned as not a great swimmer to go over the top of Kate Woff and then to be DQ'd is huge. But, you know, maybe the group can use, work with each other on the bike to, to close down gaps on, on Kate Woff, but I highly doubt it. Yeah, we shall see. But Lahare won that one by half a second it was in the end from Woff. And then, of course, she was disqualified. Lombardi was strong. Perio was strong. So the French contingent, three in the top four, which is great for the crowds here in Toulouse. And now it is time for stage three and the pursuit starts. So Kate Woff, I think will start 30.2 seconds ahead of Emma Lombardi for the last bike swim run. Now they will run to their bike and transition onto the bike for four laps and then into the water for 300 meters and then two laps at the back end. Kate Woff has the short shoot, she has 30 seconds. It is her race to lose and she knows it. She's never won here at Super League Triathlon. Lombardi, Perio not far behind her. Steinhauser a further 15 seconds back. So Lombardi and Perio will need to work together if they're gonna do anything about Kate Woff. But look at that look in her eyes. You almost think, well, she knows. Yeah, looking incredibly relaxed, just ahead of this start now for the final stage. And Woff is off and it is going to be an extremely long half a minute for Emma Lombardi and then Leone Perio as on goes the swim cap and then on goes the bike helmet on top of that. They just add that to the list of things you never see anywhere else but Super League Triathlon. <laughs> it makes for a quicker transition. Kate Woff will be very, very comfortable. She liked to be out on her own. We saw that in stage one. Tardy transition again, but that's probably fatigue. This is where these women here, relatively close together, need to either work together or race solo. We'll find out. All right, Michael Thompson, here's the boom gate. 
letting the athletes through. Steinhauser has to wait 14 extra seconds off the back of these two French women. Lombardi, the former under-23 world champ, and Perio, one of the athletes with a bit more experience in this kind of racing. Erica Ackland picks up one short shoot, as we know. The American from the Warriors, who is mid-pack at the moment, but still the leading warrior, and Wap, who's off the front, and be able to take that twice on the run. It's going to be tough for the women behind. Kate's very comfortable on the bike. She's she showed all racing that she's the best bike handler amongst the women. I think they're going to enjoy the fact that they've got no one else around them. This is all in now. There's nothing to save for. So you get your own lines. You're going to see most of the women behind having no one with them. So they just put their head down and go for it. At this point, you, the, you know, Kate Wolf has just got to ride sensibly. We can see there Lombardi, Lombardi is... Wow, I mean, losing so much time there. And Kate Wolf, I thought that, that, that Lombardi would be swimming better. And I was very surprised to see her come out third in the water. But I think she's, this is the first time she's raced Super League. And, and it's a, a pretty decent performance from the former under 23 world champion. But at the moment, Kate Wolf, all she has to do is ride stem sensibly, ride within herself, not take too many risks. See, she's got so much of an advantage. And if we can see This will be an interesting group, Steinhauser and, and, that and that's Matthias. Yeah, it's Olivia Matthias. Steinhauser will go hard. She was one of the best bikers in last year's series. She's comfortable on a bike. She's been one of the best performers on the bike today. She's been let down with a swim. She'll like the open road now and the ability just to push and use her strength to close gaps and set up a position in that top five. Yeah, bike splits wise, Steinhauser, her best is seventh in this, but Kate Woff has had the second and sixth quickest bikes overall. And that's the total bike, uh, not just the lap. Fulliger had picked up the two two of the three quickest bikes, so the Sharks have basically dominated between the two of them, but Fulliger lost it at the start of that swim, whereas Wap has continued with the complete game in this one. Isn't it interesting? We thought it would be a harder day for the women in the Sharks team with Sophie Colwell and Beth Potter sitting it out, but actually they're pretty impressive because Olivia Mathias is not far off. She finished sixth last year, sitting in around about fifth place. Now we can see her now with Steinhauser. I'd say Matthias is probably around about the same over the run with Steinhauser. Steinhauser's made up a couple of seconds in that lap on the field thus far, so she will be looking to repeat the heroics of Taylor Reid and vault the Scorpions onto the podium here. Alongside Perio too, if we could put two, or the Scorpions could put two on the, on the podium, that would be a big win for them, and they need it too. They are fighting with the Eagles for second place overall. Lombardi, meanwhile, hasn't managed to take any time out of WAF whatsoever. And the podium predictions haven't updated, as you can see down there. So predict now on the QR code and probably predict Kate Woff because John LaHare is out of this race, which puts Kate Woff in the box seat if she can have an incident-free couple of laps here on the bike. And a lovely aerial shot showing the Place de la Dorade alongside the Garonne, which is where we are all situated here for this one. And the crowds lining the wall where they get a view of well, see twice. That gap. Big gap. What Leone yes, Periol needs to do is, <laughs> is close that gap if she can to Emma Lombardi. Both the French girls could potentially work together. She needs to close that gap because Emma is a stronger swimmer and she was able to use her in that swim in that last stage. Yeah, I'd like to see Emma and uh, Leone go head to head on the yeah. run. Both great, great runners. But this is a course that will really suit Leone Periol, I think. She's very skilled as a runner, running up and downhill as well as we saw previously in the earlier stage. But that gap's starting to open to Leone. It's probably about four or five seconds. Leone knows if she can get the back wheel there, she gets that easier swim off this bike. The huge gaps well, now, it's all Yeah, it's, it's gotten a lot bigger. Six more seconds. Wolf's put into Lombardi on that bike lap. Perio all alone there in third. Steinhauser doing her best. She's now taken an extra two or three seconds out of that gap to Perio. And Matthias is helping her do that while Fulliger is all by herself looking to hold on to sixth position. Van der Kay, Alice Beto, and then Fanny Zalai potentially looking at a top 10 result after 15th last week. Look at Steinhauser on the back and, and Matthias sitting on it. We know Matthias is a fantastic swimmer. There's a long way of this racing to go. And when you look at that two through four, that group could come together and then it comes to a run shootout, which, which puts Leone right in the box seat. And this is a good day for the Sharks. Jess Fulliger hanging on there too as well. She's a great 
swim biker. Bit of uh, work to do on her own. We can just see Fanny to lie there coming around the corner. A great day for the 15-year-old because to come here and race like that, she doesn't have the experience. And it's not just the, the racing, is it? It's, it's stepping up to the occasion. Well, when you, when you think about it, Yamena de la Pena, second in the World Junior Championships in Hamburg. Her one goal was to beat Fanny Zalai. Fanny Zalai has streeted her. Yeah. So, a big one. Let's head down now to Rebecca Charlton. That gap is quite simply huge. Do you know what? We had a plan going into this race that she was going to go out there and smash the bike. But I didn't quite expect this today. She's in phenomenal shape. She's taking opportunities where she where she could and it's eventuated to this right now and I can't be happier for her you know I want to I just want to get off get her off the bike now so she can get on the podium on the top of that podium today she's never done that before it's just so exciting for her Michelle thank you it certainly is Woff big star we well, say star of the future because she's still under 23 world champion but she's a star of now she Finished second in the World Juniors back in 2017. She's now moved this year from Leeds to Portugal, where she trains alongside Miriam Casillas and Taylor Spivey. She had a top five in Yokohama in the World Triathlon Series. And she, she has come on since debuting in Jersey in the Juniors race back in 2018. And now she is about to potentially win. And that last little risk of being on the bike and maybe taking a tumble is now over. And now she has a two-kilometre run. No, she's oh, got she has a swim. swim first, and then a two-kilometre run. And this is what she's renowned for her swim. So she'd be very, very comfortable going in now. She's got open water, her own, her own sight lines for the boy. It's, it's a foregone conclusion. Unless something happens now, cramps. It's going to be very, very difficult to get over the top of her now. I can't imagine having that much gap going into the water with just 300 metres. So someone's down. Oh, Steinhauser. Oh no. Run. No, I oh. think it's Nicole no, Vandekay. Van Vandekay, it is too. Yep. yep. That was, she was finishing quite well, Vandekay. She was ninth last week, and now she's got an issue with the chain as we look for the replay. And she's oh. coming in the two. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Crashed into a team, Beto mate. and Vandekay have come together. And oy, she oy. does not look in good shape either. And she looks to continue with a race. Now, the Kiwis are made of tough stuff. That no, was that, a big crash. And she's hit her face as well, coming down as well. And, and that's interesting. I'd like to see that replay again. I kind of missed it. Did she try to come up on Looked the inside? Looked like she came up on the inside yeah. and just got closed out as the, as the gutter kicked out and just lost that room. Bang. Yeah, we'll see if we get another, another look at it again. And we'll, we'll take another look. And here it is. And... She was on the inside as we head up, and it looked like Beto. Yeah, she closed that closed gap. Closed into see her, her. Uh, and she definitely wouldn't have seen her. And costly. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts the Scorpions, and but more than anything, it hurts Nicole Van der Kay, and we hope she's okay. She was sitting up in eighth position, so that was seventh and eighth, which are big points on the line for the team. There's Beto there in seventh. He was seventh and eighth position. Lopez now taking that eighth spot. If you look at that, at those times, the eliminations that are about to arrive when they finish the swim, Lopez will be gone, Hauser will be gone, Salai will be eliminated, and there'll be seven left, which is nearly a record, considering how far ahead in this she is. So back in 2018, I want to say Katie Zafir has eliminated everyone but six. There were six total. Kate Woff is about to eliminate all but seven in this one, which is... White's crazy. <laughs> I think we'll lose Beto as well because three seconds to go. Yeah, Alicia Beto. I'm just wondering, you know, Let she's been run. out of the sport yeah. for some time and that was quite a big mistake she made on the bike, I think, swerving into her teammate. But this is racing and accidents happen. Let's find out whether MG is of the same mind. We'll go down to Rebecca right now. MG, Leone Perriot is sat in third position at the moment, looking good. Yeah, fighting spirit of the French, we really appreciate it. But unfortunately, luck's not on our side. We've had a crash with one of our other girls, Vanny Kay. So what can I say? The London luck continues to hit us upon the nose. Yeah, and I don't know about the victory. I wouldn't take this victory. The motorbike just, that girl's amazing. Put her in the Olympics for the bike. Oh, he's, he's disappointed, the old MG. Tell you what. Yeah, well, I don't think you can blame the motorbike or anything else for the kind of dominance that Kate Woff has displayed because she has been absolutely superb all the way throughout this race. 
right from attacking the first bike. And now she, you can see the gap back there. And on paper, that's, what was it, 45 seconds. It'd take me about three minutes to swim that far. But for these athletes, 45 seconds, gap back as Kate Woff will look to run at home. She has the short shoot in the pocket and she will get the opportunity now, barring incident, to just soak this up. Oh, she can really enjoy this moment. I just looked back and saw that the, the nearest swimmer to her was only just coming around that last boy. So she has an absolutely huge advantage and she can afford to kind of really relax into this run and really put no pressure. And as you said, just enjoy the crowd. They might be disappointed that it's not a French athlete, but Leonie Perio was sitting in third position. Lombardi is still up there as well. So they've still got something to cheer for here in Toulouse. And what's the form guide on Lombardi v Perio on the run? Leone, a magnificent runner, especially over the longer distance here, two kilometres. Yeah, I think Emma's a little bit tired today. I think she's so new to this style of racing. First time she's raced on the Super League series, and I think that Leone Perio, if they come out and swim together, will get the better of Emma Lombardi. But look at Kate Wolf. She looks like she's on the first stage, doesn't she? Hardly breathing, as we can see. Now, that is Lombardi making her way out of the swim. She's got a bit of a gap by the looks of things on Leone Perio. He's getting out now. Joined by Matthias. Big swim by Matthias. Yeah, another big swim. She was so strong last week. Second fastest swimmer. And this is your podium chase. The young French woman, Emma Lombardi, her taboo. And she just continues to impress across all sorts of distances and formats. And I think a debutante finishing second step on the podium would be up there with one of the great debut performances, no doubt. This Perio is the race to watch. Her. This is the race to watch. Perio v Lombardi. A French race off. Nine two, seconds. Nine, nine seconds nine over two k. Both of them looking for Olympic selection. So. Oh my gosh, this is an interesting race. Mm. So Lopez has managed to swim away back in under the 90 seconds. So there will be eight who will finish this race if she transitions well. The eliminations will be coming thick and fast below that as Kate Woff continues to put time into this field. And the advantage of having that initial gap of 12 seconds, having had a hard stage one is that you can potentially look around and measure your efforts a little bit more, whereas everyone else is going hammer and tongs to catch you up. And that is why she has a little bit left in the tank here in the last run. There's Emma Lombardi going around the corner, making her way to the downhill section. And what do you reckon, Maka? She a couple of seconds or two? Yeah, Leone gets that run rhythm going. She uses the downhill we saw in that last stage, really used the downhill well. The advantage for Leone in third position there in the red bar in Victorious is that she has Lombardi to look at to pace off and to close that gap, much easier to be in that position than to hold athletes coming at you from behind. There's another casualty. That's a lie. That's a lie. Who eliminated. has finished, I think, in the top ten, did she? But she went a lot. Yes, I yep. think ninth overall, which I think is outstanding. Survived this race quite a lot longer than she did last time around, which had a bit of a crash in London. But, yeah, here, here is the battle for second place on the podium. Crucial team points, crucial championship points. And, of course, being the top French woman in front of a big French crowd here in Toulouse. And it is a two-lap run, just to remind you. So there is still plenty to go in this one, about 1.4 Ks. And a lot can change in that as they head downhill. And Perio really put time into the field, too, here's on a, the downhills. Here's her downhill running, Leone. Interesting Lombardi not looking back at all, so she's found her rhythm. She's not concerned on where Perio is, which is a positive sign for her. I think she should be. Yeah, it's when you start taking those glances back, you're starting to second-guess how you're feeling, and, and that's when you start to let the self-doubt creep in and gaps close a lot more rapidly. And as long as you're looking forward like, like Kate Woff is right now, she knows this is... She's looking up the screen to see the gap. Well, she can't get the gap. She doesn't look behind her. She can't see what the gap is yeah. either because she is so far ahead of everybody else. It's nearly a minute right now, and that means there is eight left in this race. And Kate Wolf has put down a marker for this season. She's saying with fifth and first, she is right there in the championship standings. She's a contender. She Maybe she's not. She's about to win her first race, but maybe she's not just a race winner. Maybe she's a championship winner, and that would change everything. Here comes the, the battle the for second and third. 
Leone it's hard is to tell closing from that angle. I think she's closing the gap. Oh, she's definitely closed. It's down to about five seconds now as she passes that bin, counting it does. The, the camera angle foreshortens it, but amazing from Woff. It really is. 800 metres to go before she finds herself on top of the podium and never been on the podium as yet in a Super League Series event. She was 6th, 13th, 11th, 11th and 10th last year as we see Lombardi go through an MG there trying to encourage Leone Perio. And the battle between Lombardi and Perio continues. Let's see what Tim Don has to say about it. Tim, a brilliant performance out there by Lombardi. Oh, what a run. You know, she's um, new to Super League this year. And um, to, for a home, home crowd to come up here, she had a tough race in Paris. I'm so impressed. She got bike points as well. And that was really hard to do in this game. Fanny Salai was looking really strong, unfortunately, she's out. But again, Fanny, I, Fanny is racing Olympians, world champions who are seniors. She had a great race, she's learning. By, by Neon, she will be on fire. Another, a top 10 from her, I couldn't be prouder for Fanny, could not be prouder. She's just wonderful, thank you. Well, while we were hearing that, Leonie Perio has put the hammer down and taken second place. She used that uphill well, she put the hammer down on that uphill. Lombardi was struggling a little bit, and not only did she go past her, she hit her hard or straight over the top, and that gap's opened. I tell you what, this is what I love about the triple mix, because if we look at the first stage, Leonie Perrier was actually 20 seconds and more behind over a 300-metre swimming. You would have thought at that stage she's dead and buried, and now she's running for second place. You can break the spirit. You see Lombardi when I was saying she wasn't looking back on that lap one. Face is very, very different now. Suddenly from second position, she may be challenged at third. I think the gap's big enough, but you know that the spirit's broken. And that's what Leone's experience did. She used that hill remarkably well. You know what? If I was Kate Woff, I'd just not take it. It's just a pure, pure um, message to the rest of the field. Not required. I can win without a short shoot. I don't shoot. need a short shoot. That's completely fine. But Perry, I mean, she's got experience. 29 years of age. She's French, European and world mixed team relay champion. She knows how to dig deep. She helped her team to a bronze medal in the mixed team relay in Tokyo. And she's had great results. And look at the smile on the face of Woff, who's allowed her emotions to shine through because she sees absolutely no one around her. And Perio will be thinking the same very soon as well. But here in Toulouse, there has never been a French winner of this race. There was a Brit last year in Georgia Taylor Brown. And now the torch has been handed on to another Brit, Kate Woff, who was hoping for a podium, just wanted to hit the bike. Her fist pumps the air, and why not? Kate Woff has announced herself as a contender in Super League Triathlon with a dominant performance. Kate Woff, welcome to Super League. And welcome to the top step. Michelle Dillon gets the first hug. Max Stapley's about to race. He takes time too. What an effort from the Sharks who continue to dominate the teams. There's simply no one else around. They didn't expect that today, and here comes Leone Perio. Lombardi has tried to hang on, but Perio now has got a really decent gap flying home. The French crowds in Toulouse are going to be ecstatic to have two of their athletes on the podium. Nearly a minute back, but the first French woman to cross the line is 29 year old Leone Perio, who is in her first race of the year, but definitely not her first Super League race. And she ran it home. That's exactly right. Ale Leone and also Ale Emma, who finishes on the podium in her debut. A strong, solid race from Lombardi. That long run hurt Lombardi. She's only 21, yeah, right? She's you know. got a lot of future ahead of her. Oh, big future, big, big future. Three of them are streets ahead of the, the other five who are left in this race. And the next person to come across the line will be Matthias, who I think saw the writing on the wall having got out of that swim with Perio. And then Steinhauser, Elite Beto, who will finish this one as well along with Jess Fulliger, who lost time at the start of that swim, and Lopez, who has just held on as well. We'll head down now to the black carpet, to Rebecca and to Kate Woff.
Kate, you absolutely dominated from start to finish. How happy are you with that performance? Honestly, I'm absolutely over the moon. I was absolutely mad. It was so fun. Yeah. I think mad sums up that race format, doesn't it? The epic triple mix. We love to see it, but how was it out there? How do you keep your head in order? Honestly, I felt like I was actually railing around the corners to the point where I was losing my back wheel a couple of times. So on the last couple of laps of the bike, I was like, OK, I've got to get out now. Just calm down, like, just keep your head. But, yeah, I just, I went absolutely full gas. And by the last run, I was absolutely, my legs were gone. And at one point, I heard someone shout, oh, you've got 50 metres on the person behind. And I was like, what? So I was looking around frantically, like, is there someone I can't see? But I think, yeah, they must have got confused or something. I mean, that gap was huge. But also, here at Super League, we see people throwing up, laying on the floor. I, I promise you, you look totally fresh. I think that's just crazy adrenaline right now. I knew I had a good chance of getting on the podium today and I just decided to take each stage as it went and just go like absolutely full gas from the gun and it paid off today. So yeah, I'm really happy. It certainly paid off. You were absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to all of Toulouse who come out to watch and all of Super League for putting on this event. I'm so grateful. Congratulations once again, Kate. That was so, so tight at the end. Talk us through that finale. Yes, uh, I am very happy for my, for my performance. And uh, for me, the first one is very hard for me. And um, I am happy for my team and for uh, me. And uh, for me, the atmosphere is uh, very good in Toulouse. I am happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for you in particular, these crowds must be very, very special. Yeah, yeah, special, special. My career, uh, from run in French is uh, very special for me and I am happy uh, for my uh, race. <laughs> How confident were you that you could move up to second on that, that final finish straight? Yes, yes, um, I am happy for my second place. And uh, no, uh, uh, f uh, f f f sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Do not say sorry, you're absolutely exhausted. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, sorry. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a performance. You secured that podium. How are you feeling reflecting? Ooh, it, was, uh, it was hard. It was really hard. Uh, such short format and re you uh, always uh, at full gas. Uh, yeah, I did my best uh, with uh, what I have today. But uh, yeah, it was uh, really interesting. A bit of disappointment for your teammates. How aware of that are you when you're in the thick of the action? Uh, yeah, I, uh, during the second run when we went for the bike, I just saw her in the middle and I was wondering what she was doing. But yeah, the, the race kept going and uh, I heard she was dis disqualified just uh, before we, we, took, uh, we were going to the first stage. Uh, so yeah, I feel really sorry for her, uh, obviously, but uh, we have uh, two, next, uh, two next stage uh, to, be, to be better. Certainly. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again. Thank you. What a race that was for Kate Wolf, and what a race it was overall as well. And we had a look at the last stage, and it was straight on to the bike where Wolf had a very solid lead to protect. She did exactly that. Lombardi had a bit of a tardy start. She had a, a tough transition onto the bike, and then she had a little bit of difficulty getting the shoes on, which gave Perio a chance to sight her and those two worked together for a little while and then worked against each other once they knew that WAP was gone. And she definitely was. Transitioned well, heading into the swim. Had a lovely swim all on her own. And that right there, though, was a big, big moment for Nicole van der Kay. We will find out if she is OK. We'll try to get some words from her as the men's race continues. But she really felt that tarmac there and we feel bad for her she continued on i think just to the next transition meanwhile out the front wop was swimming perfectly and then all she had to do was a two kilometer run with two short shoots and she said it was the adrenaline but she did look comfortable out there she had that look that katie zafiris used to have when she was that far out the front a few years back and she knew she had done the job and that is exactly what she did dominated and sent a message to the rest of the field that she is a big, big threat for this championship series.
as we look at the results. 46 seconds at the end, over through the top five, two Scorpions in there, Steinhauser managed to scrape in to finish just a tick over the 90 seconds. And now it is time to go again. And Jonathan Brownlee, well, he has come here having finished second overall in London. He will be looking to dominate, but there are plenty of new faces. Led by Matt Hauser, race wins last year. Uh, race penalties, crashes as well. And alongside him at the Eagles, the 70.3 world champion from last year, the Ironman world champion, the world champion, Christian Blumenfeld, and the 2022 world champion, Leo Berger, who comes back to France to race and to lay more of a marker for his Paris Olympic hopes. Chase McQueen leads a relatively inexperienced Warriors lineup. And fresh off that podium, they're calling him the Chunder from Down Under after he painted the black carpet, finishing that race. Taylor Reid and Henry Schumann finishing seventh, boosted by having his family here on site. Finally, the other Scorpion, Hayden Wilds. We continue the build up to the men's race, but currently the women's leaderboard at the halfway mark of the series. Sharks and Brits, one, two, three. Wap, four points ahead of Matthias. Fulliger on 18. Jean Lahair doesn't add to her tally from last week, having been disqualified and two Scorpions in the top six. Now it's time for the medal presentation. Down on the black carpet here in Toulouse. Christian Fleury with the Indoor Council, the President of the Sports Commission, and the champagne will be presented by Leonid Boguslavski, Chairman of Super League The medals, Triathlon. Christophe Delahaye, the Regional Councillor and President of the Sports Commission. Here in Toulouse, in third place, handing out the champagne France, will be Leonid Rogoslavsky, co-founder of Lombardi. Super League Triathlon. And it was Emma Lombardi who ended up in third position, putting two French women on the podium. And as we say, at 21 years of age, you almost come to expect it from Lombardi, but you forget how young she is and how quick this rise has been. Yeah, and to walk straight into Super League racing and finish on your podium in your first attempt, wow, amazing. The only thing that stopped her from finishing on the second step of the podium was a fantastic run at the back end from Perio, who led in on her experience and France, also her form as well, having finished second in Montreal Victoria in the World Scorpions, Triathlon Series back in June. Leonie She's made a move to Versailles to train and it is paying off. Leonie Perio, a very popular podium getter, Annie. Absolutely great to see her. She's had a few ups and downs over the last year with injury, but great to see her on top of, or well, not on top, but back on the podium. Absolutely, the newcomers uh, who missed London coming in fresh and taking spots three and two, first place, but they couldn't do anything about Super Kate Waugh, who disappeared on the first bike and winner, never reappeared for the rest Great of the field. Britain, representing RTP and Sharks, our championship Kate leader Waugh. and our race winner, Kate Waugh. Mac, you've always been a big fan of Kate Woff, and this just uh, proves you right, which I hate to say. Oh, I'm a huge fan of Kate Woff. We called it a couple of years ago. She's just balanced across the three disciplines. We saw that today. She worked so hard. Just a, a, a huge Ladies challenge. So much depth in British triathlon, but she is one, without doubt, one of the stars of the future, and I expect to see her in Paris. That's a big call, Macca. That's a big call. <laughs> so many good prints. She's coming into it. She's coming into that form. We saw it today. She's continually racing. She's improving, you know, month by month. Yeah. She is. It's going to be a very strong French team and a very strong British team as well. When we get to Paris, which is, of course, just up the road from where we are right now as the sun continues to shine down on everyone, but especially on Kate Woff, who is enjoying immensely her time at the top of the podium, and, in fact, her first podium in Super League triathlon racing. So, as the women soak it up, and the men get ready. We look forward to new, more new faces, led by none other than the Falcon joining the Scorpions, Hayden Wilds.
yeah, like I was super gutted not to race for the team and, and miss London, you know. To call up and say I can't race, I haven't done that for like six years. When I saw Hayden drop the bike, pull out on that run, I was mortified. My first thought was, okay, forget the Olympics, what about Super League? We need you next week in London. Last year I was in, in the Sharks. To be betrayed by the team was, you know, it was hard on the heart, so uh, let's see if we can uh, bring the Bahrain team back. You know, there's still three more rounds and anything can happen, so let's do it. Hayden is made of a certain steel. He is just a fierce racer. I think he's just got the specifics spot on for Super League. And that's why he's a winner. Everything he does is building confidence. It's a snowball. He's rolling down a hill, getting bigger and bigger, and he's harder, harder to beat. Hayden Wild is your series champion. Not off the podium on any day of the series. Very worthy Super League champion. I'm pretty stoked to, to race here again. Um, love the crowds in France, love the people. Looking forward to it. It's a tough technical course, suits me well. If you can ride, if you can throttle up, throttle down really well, you can hurt some people seriously into this. Being full gas and being aggressive, that's re rewarded me pretty well. He just takes the risks and he, and he goes for it. It's so hard for me not to see myself on a podium. He's put himself in this position, he's ready to deliver. Hayden Wild be tough to beat. The 2022 champion, but some people say that it was only due to bad luck that this man wasn't the 2022 champion. He comes back after COVID. It is Australia's Matt Hauser. I think everything that happened in London. There's the penalty for the false star from Matty Hauser. They picked the wrong eagle. It wasn't his penalty to serve. The officials made a big mistake. Of human. And then the crash, the disappointment of Malibu. Oh, Matt Hauser's down in exactly wow. the same place as Georgia Taylor Brown. That's what you do for the race, eh? You like put, you put your heart and soul into it. Pretty annoying, but. What more could happen and he could still fight on? Matt won't quit. Matt Hauser will not quit. Matt Hauser is your Munich champion, denied last week, takes it this week. This is absolutely fantastic from, from Matt and just shows what a force he's going to be over the years to come. Matt Hauser has fought back and fought back the Australian with his second race win of the season and you can see how much it means to him. You know, technically he's getting better and better. He's really starting to fulfil his potential. Over the years, Matty Hauser's been there or thereabouts, but this year's different. He wants it. Matty Hauser is coming here to execute. He is coming here to win. So Hauser and Wilde join this list, but they are not alone in being new names on this start list as we warm up for Toulouse round two of the championship series. Joining Hauser at the Eagles, Christian Blumenfeld, who has swept all before him in the last couple of years, and Leo Berger. Look out for Brownlee from the Sharks, Wild at the Scorpions, and over at the Warriors, the new name is Mark Debrick. But it is the Sharks we welcome out onto the black carpet first, starting with Dan Dixon, who finished sixth in London. His best is a fourth. He absolutely loves to race, does not miss one. Chris Perham is here as well, won the team's title with Bahrain Victorious last year. Plenty of SLT experience for him. But a new name, Jack Stanton Stock, who made waves in the arena games. Max Stapley, who, well, look at him, they call him the Big Easy, and for a reason, led the swim, finished fifth overall, and Johnny Brownlee second in London. And we head down now to Michelle Dillon. Pure dominance in the women's race. More of the same now. Well, I really hope so. The women have set a massive benchmark now for our Sharps team in the men. The vibe is set, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what these guys are going to do. They're very hungry today, so let's see what the Sharks can, can achieve out there. They look hungry, Michelle, thank you. She was looking for a pun there, but she couldn't quite get it over the line. The Santara Tech Eagles next out, led by Kenji Nina, who... By his own admission, didn't have the race he would have liked in London. He's looking for some redemption. Emil Holm, who is a great addition to the field after debuting last year. Four top tens for the Eagles last year. Christian Blumenfeld, world champion. Ironman world champion. 70.3 world champion. Olympic champion. And there is Matt Hauser coming back from a bout of COVID. And finally, we welcome out Leo Berger, the 2022 world champion. What a lineup, Tim Don. Tim, Don, what a team lineup! What can we expect from the men's race? The Eagles are going to race with all heart today. Um, you know, they're really pumped from the women's race. They're taking, they've learned from watching it. They're going to be going full gas from the front. We're going to see a flock of eagles flying high. Ah, love it, Tim. Good luck.
RTS Warriors. Well, it was a tough outing for the RTS Warriors Set in the Warriors. women's, but let's see if they can turn it around in the men's. A tough swim, set up a tough race Mark for Seth Ryder, Dubrick. but he was strong apart from that. Didn't feature. Mark Dubrick Louis is the debutant, 28 years old, just coming off eighth in the 70.3 World Champs last Carter weekend. Reese Madison took the run points. Look out for him on the run. Carter and Stuhlmacher, also 18 years of age, is there. And the leading RTS this team, Chase Warriors. McQueen, ninth in London, a former Arena Games winner. Look out for him in the swim with Matt Hauser. And here is Nick Chase to tell us about it. Nick, these crowds are absolutely incredible. How much does this fire up your athletes? Well, after the punches we took in that first round, I think the Warriors are built for this. They're fired up, and I cannot expect anything but the top performance from each and every one of my male competitors. Nick, thank you so much. Thank you. The Bahrain Victoria Scorpions. And finally Henry out there Schumann. is the Bahrain Victoria Scorpions. And there is Henry Schumann, Shazza who Sagi. led the team last week, finished seventh overall, wants better, and he needs to start with a fast Roberto swim. Speaking Sanchez of wanting better, Shahar Sagiv had a puncture last week. Roberto Sanchez Mandicon ran his Roberto. way into fourth. He'll be looking for his first podium. Vitaly Vorontsov, the Ukrainian. And Taylor Reid, fresh off that podium, full of confidence. And finally, the Falcon, Hayden Wild, last year's champion, joins the team and will try and get a word with Michael Gilliam. Hey, Jim, I can just run in and grab you. Tell us about this team, the Scorpions. Well, finally, we're back to full strength, so we'll be ready to rumble. We won't be humble. <laughs> Brilliant stuff, MG. Thank you, as always. I don't know what's going on with all the rhyming coming from MG today. But is it Eminem or MG? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, you never know what you're going to get as we line up for stage one. It is the traditional swim, bike and run. A three-stage race. If you're just joining us, a short gap between each stage. So three triathlons back to back. The first one is in the normal order. Swim, bike and run. 300 metres, 4Ks and 1K. But every minute you lose in stage one and two, every second is paid for in the stage three pursuit start. The crowd has built and we are ready for what will be an incredible men's race. Here we go, Super League Triathlon to lose. The men are in the water. See the start here. Henry Schumann on the far right. He, he wanted that position with no one on his right side so he could get some open water. He's really keen to get this swim cream if he possibly can and set his race up he missed that last week with a congested start in london he's already off to a great start yeah it'd be great to see uh, henry coming back we we know in years gone by he was so dominant in the swim but after a bit of time out with injury he hasn't really had the swims that we were used to seeing when he got uh, the bronze medal in the olympics the commonwealth games gold and we can just see there on the left hand side of your screen the men's leaderboard alex she of course sitting out of this race um focusing on pontevedra the final of the world triathlon series but he will be back Matty Hauser. in malibu yeah maddie hauser right in the middle of the screen off like a rock Ship. He's a massive swimmer and flanked on the far left. Was It looked like Max Stapley with that long, yeah. loping stroke. There's someone on the hip or on the shoulder now of Stapley as well, who I think is a, a warrior who's sitting in. But Stapley, the leading shark. Hauser in the middle in the white. That'd and be then McQueen. in the red, closest That'd be to us is Henry Schumann, who's losing time. But a representative from each of the four teams out the front and the team's folding in behind them. Don't forget, you can predict the winner. So just hit that QR code on your screen with the phone. That's, you get it with your phone camera, and if you know, you know what that is—a QR code. Are you being cheeky? Yeah, I, I know 100%. exactly what it is. Of course. Look at that Hayden Wild way out in front. No, Johnny Brownlee only down with 14%. I'd give him a few more than that, but this is a, a fantastic swim. Is that Chase McQueen? It's Ch out Chase in McQueen. Front? Yeah, it definitely. is indeed from the Warriors. Let's hope he can pick up some points because at the moment the Warriors are struggling. So Chase McQueen, obviously, he's having a fantastic swim as he does. He also had the fastest bike here last year by four seconds. Well, look so, at that, the Scorpions all on the back. Oh. That far right side with that current has paid, has not done them well. They saw them forced off that first swim boy out wide. Henry Schumann had to go. So they're probably swimming at 10 or 15 metres further. And that gap could That's be significant. Huge gap. That is a huge gap. And McQueen sitting out front, enjoying a great run in as the Warriors were on the inside line. The current goes from screen left to screen right. So it's actually pushing you away from the first boy. So they're fighting the Scorpions against the current as well. We yeah. do have a, a, a pontoon draw. So it is luck of the draw. And then you get to choose. And the Scorpions didn't get the choice they wanted. 
whereas the Warriors did, and that means they end up with prime position with a prime swimmer, McQueen, who was in a, a three-way swim battle, I guess, with Hauser and Taylor Reid last year, but Reid in the Scorpions and Scooman in the Scorpions haven't had the swim they would have hoped, and it's three Warriors on the front, just showing you how much that pontoon position has helped them, because there's not, I guess, excellent swimmers or the guys you think about as yeah. leading the front of the swim from the from the Warriors, except for outside of McQueen. Just looking for the cap there of Hayden Waller. I haven't seen it bunched up there with the uh, Scorpions 32. That is Chase McQueen. A bit of a slip. It's a really slippy ramp out of the water. We see plenty of Warriors coming out. Yeah, Dubrick and then Ryder. Hauser. And Stapley are the top five in the swim. There's not much covering anyone, though, and all that good work you can do in the swim can be evaporated with a tardy transition. And this way. good, though. Yeah, and this... short shoot. Short shoot, Alec. We'll go to the Warriors. Boom, I'll need that. Just as it did with Victoria Lopez in the women's, it goes to the Warriors again, and it's two Warriors out first, and Hauser, who right now is on the part of the course that he was involved in a crash in last year, so he'll be putting that to bed, hopefully, mentally. As they all jump on and head on a four-kilometre bike, and McQueen is looking around going, where is everyone to help me? It was, it was wild, and, and uh, Blumenfeld together a bit further back than they'd want to be. Both those athletes will be very, very happy to work together and close gaps. There wasn't a much gap between the entire field. This is where bike skills are come into play, and we saw Hayden Wild, a bit like... Uh, John, a bit like uh, uh, Kate Woff in the women's race, using her his technical skills to open up on this bike course. Yeah, just having a look, 15 seconds, 15 plays at Blumenfeld, nearly 15 seconds down. All right, we head down now to Rebecca, who will be very, will be very happy, Nick Chase. Nick Chase, what did you make of that start? This is pretty much what we knew was going to happen when we got that beautiful start, positions one through five. We've selected this team based on a lot of personal strengths, and our swimmers are nothing to be trifled with. So these boys just now have to hold their own on the bike, go with the best in the world on the bike and the run, and I think that the Warriors have a chance in the men's field. Good luck. Thank you. Johnny Brownlee has pushed his way up towards the... Head of the pack, he's tacked on to the back of Seth Ryder there, but there are three still out the front. Hayden Wilde still through. without his shoes on. A few of the athletes still opting not to put their shoes on, fighting for those positions to close those gaps. That's how important it is, and that was Christian Blumenfeld a fair way back, but we know he can ride a bike. Well, he can, but how is he going to feel after coming from Finland, 70.3 <laughs> World Championships last weekend, where he didn't fare too well, and then Singapore the week before that, Paris test event before that, as we see the athletes coming round. Six seconds, Leo Berger in second place behind Chase McQueen, who's riding phenomenally well on this tough course. Does McQueen stay out here and try and do a cape off and, and put some time in early? I think he has to, doesn't he? He doesn't look like he's on the absolute button. But he, he needs to, to keep that gap away if he's going to come in and be able to measure his pace throughout this race in the same way that Kate Woff did. It could be easier on the front. You've got your own lines to follow. You're not caught in that bunches. You're not having to jostle for positions. It can be very, very tight. You, this, the camera doesn't do it justice. It's a very, very tight, skinny French road, and it gets congested, especially as you come through this technical section. Chase McQueen can just use his own lines, come and ride his own race, run through his gears and keep his cadence high and actually control his power, which sets him up for a better run. And it's not a comfortable bike ride when you're in a pack around here. There's a lot of uh, sort of blind corners and changes of tarmac and, you know, little ruffles or little gutters, as we've seen. It's better to be on your own. And we'll head down now again to Tim Don to give us his update on how he thinks this race is panning out. Second and fourth position for the Eagles, as we last saw it, Tim. Absolutely, and we've got Emil coming and Christian's riding so strongly. We really want to get to the front of the bike by the end of this round to really control the run, and then from there we can push on the second race. How much more is there for you to think about with this race format? I mean, you can see now Chase is not giving up, so fair play to him. But you've got Leo on the front, absolutely charging. You've got King Nino, this is his kind of course. Maddie Hauser, and look at Emil Holmes. I'm loving it. Let's go, Christian. We're loving it. It's so tight. Thank you so much. The question I have is, where is Hayden Wild on this timing sheet? He's We're there. Not seeing him I've right seen now. him on screen. I just haven't seen him cut pop up on the timing sheet, even after the swim. But he's definitely there. I see that Red Bull hat he runs around in, the, the, the helmet. No, he's not in the front pack, that's for sure. So not a great start for Wilde. Watch Bergier. He, geez, he's technically efficient. He's been happy to sit on the front of this group. They've all benefited 
interrupted those, those four athletes behind, Chase McQueen. Leo loving this technical bike course, and he's the one that's opened that gap on Hauser, his teammate, who had his wheel after that first lap. I can see Hayden Wild there with the Red Bull helmet, as you say, part of this group right here, so his timing chip's not working, so we'll keep the, uh, the eyes on the Falcon as last year's race winner looks to build himself into this race. Now, Chase McQueen, 15 seconds slower on the run last year in Toulouse, so we'll see if that plays into this one. There is the QR code, so continue to predict who's going to win this race. Add your vote to the pile, and we'll see what the poll says as the race starts to take shape over the opening stage here of the Triple Mix here in Toulouse. Great start for Johnny Brownlee, who uh, finished behind Alex G in London last week. As the ref there rings the bell, just one lap to go of this four-lap first stage here in Toulouse. But uh, this is our chase pack. It's a little bit bigger. Oh, no. That's, that's the entire that's group. That's that's Leo. McQueen's come it's back Leo. to the yep. pack. Just yep. call it Leo Bergier. He has not got off the front. He moves straight to the front of the bike after closing that gap to Chase McQueen. He's been happy to take up the run of racing. And... They've all benefited from that. He's the sole athlete that's established this break, without question. Well, he's not stopping there either. He's staying on the front, and there's two eagles in there. There's a shark and a warrior as well, or two warriors. And no scorpions, Macca. No scorpions. Johnny Brownlee and Kenji Nina being have benefited from Leo Bergi. I think Johnny's going to unleash a massive run. He hasn't had to do the the lion's share of work, which he's often happy to do. He's been able to benefit from having Leo there, who's amped up with his home crowd. He's a world champion, technically amazing, coming from the south of France, riding down those mountains around Nice, and he looks remarkable. He does indeed. Great to see Johnny Brownlee, though. You know, he's definitely in the twilight of, of his years of, or, or time of his career, and it's just great to see the three times Olympic medalist racing so well. He absolutely loves this style of racing, and at around about 32 years of age, this is really positive from Johnny Brownlee, who had a really poor Olympic test event in Paris just a couple of weeks ago. Well, he backed that up, though, a week later with uh, second. Exactly, uh, behind Alex in London, Behind Alex Yee, who's not here, so if Johnny can uh, be there or thereabouts, considering the, the new names, then he might lead this championship. So there is a short shoot up for grabs, and it could be anyone, whoever has the, the best transition. The Warriors already have one, but they can deny the other teams from picking it up, and that really could be crucial in this men's racing, which is always close. Who can get across the line first? It's going to be Berger, and it's going to be the Eagles. Brownlee has a great transition too. McQueen, then Ryder, then Nina, who already has the swim cap Look on. Look at Hayden through transition. Again, his transition's the key point of his racing. He's by far the fastest, and he's closed a lot of the gaps he lost in that swim. Schumann just off the back of him. Yeah, Dixon love, and Blumenfeld. I loved his interview where he said, I, I don't know myself if I'm not on the podium. I only see myself on the podium, and that's why he is the reigning champion here in Toulouse, and he's determined to make that happen again as he claws back the deficit from the early stage of the run. But look at Johnny Brownlee pu pushing the plays with Leo Berger, the current world champion, on his heels. Yeah. He's a fit Johnny Brown. He's wonderful to watch, isn't he? Oh, he's he is. I love a it. Beautiful racer. He, he, as we said, he benefited from that bike group. He was able to be very tactically smart. And let's hope he can unleash a big run, a Brownlee run, which we're so used to seeing. Well, it certainly looks like a Johnny Brownlee run. And Berger, the 2022 world champion, tucked in behind. Wild is looking to erase that gap. And, you know, he's come off three weeks he hasn't raced uh, ever since he uh, came off early in the morning on the Paris Test event. And it's something, he hasn't missed a race in six years, so it's, it's hard to know how he is and, and how he feels after having a break like that. It certainly is. Look at Leo Berger now just coming up on the shoulder of Johnny Brownlee. But uh, Johnny Brownlee just loving this course. He's a great cross-country runner, loves the ups and downs. It's a race in two right now. And Berger and Brownlee putting the hammer down and putting time into the rest of the field. If you're just joining us, of course, a pursuit start for stage three. So very, very important. Wild is dragging Scoobin up as the uh, two scorpions to try and cover that gap to Nina, Ryder and McQueen, who are all together. And Dixon as well trying to cross over. But at the moment, it's Berger and Brownlee who at last split were just a second in front. Now I'd say they're probably three seconds in front as they run down towards the finish line of stage one. 
Now, the Warriors picked up the first short shoot. The Eagles picked up the second. And if Johnny Brownlee can cross the line first at the end of stage one, he'll pick up a short shoot for the Sharks. And there is the Shark and the Eagle on the grass running down the, um, the side of the Garon. It's a foot race between the Eagle and the Shark. And I think the Shark's going to oh, go over. Johnny over the top of Leo. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, come, on, oh, come on, Johnny. This is great to see. Leo Bergier, the current world champion, Johnny Brownlee, he's lifeless. His career is its amazing. He's still pushing the pace for the world's best. Absolutely great race. Well, yeah. Bergier denies the short shoot to Brownlee. Blumenfeld does what he does and comes across the line in a big rush. Wild and Schumann are your top five. Not much separating them compared to what we saw in the women's. Ryder and Nina within the 10 seconds. And McQueen faded in the end there to 14.7 seconds back. And we're missing Hauser. Hauser was a long way back. I was going to call that earlier. Yeah, missing he was Hauser. There right, he is. Interestingly, it was Sanchez and, and Blumenfeld who run from the oh, ran from that good. Hauser pack to close that gap. Something wrong with Matty Hauser. Well, he's coming back from COVID, and it can be one of those things that you might not just not have that top yeah. end, and that's what this racing demands of you. It absolutely does. You can only come here, can't you, when you well, you can run and not feel 100%, but if you're not 100%, it's going to hurt straight away. We can see Matty Hauser there just suffering, um, obviously not totally recovered from COVID. He had a difficult race here last year, and he would have wanted to make amends for that. He did win the final in Neum, and we expected a lot from here from him here today. So Johnny Brownlee setting the bike up. We're hearing that he did have an issue with his bike, but the bike mechanic can come in and fix it up. And apparently everything is under control for Johnny Brownlee. So take a sigh of relief. Great Britain and Sharks fans. Everything is okay right now for the champ. So setting it up again for stage two. We're getting better access to, access to the team managers this time. There's just Tim Don sprinting down the other end. As we head down now to Rebecca Charlton. Johnny, I know you're very, very busy. How happy are you with that start? A lot better than I had last year, so I was a long way behind last year. But uh, yeah, it doesn't, a lot doesn't really happen to last leg, so that's where the double run is. But yeah, couldn't start any better, really. You seem very calm as well. Oh, well, didn't look it. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Well, no, you fake Thank you so much, Johnny. Taking a couple of seconds as we look back at how this one shook out and Chase McQueen along with two other Warriors came out of the water so big swim points for them and McQueen put it down at the start of the bike picked up the short shoot for the Warriors and had a good first half of the bike before the crowd caught up to them. Berger managed to steal the second short shoot this one for the Eagles as we saw the sign go up and Berger held off Brownlee and gapped the rest of the field. Those two in big form from Wild and Blumenfeld. And now we ready ourselves for stage two. And that one, I mean, the cream rose to the top in a lot of ways. We're going to find out now how much the travelling has taken out of Blumenfeld and also where Hauser is at, which is a really interesting one, both for the Eagles. But there was an interesting discussion in the Scorpions team meeting of where Hayden Wild's going to start here. He wanted to actually start in fifth position and get a running start. I'll see if he does do that. There's Henry Schumann on the front. Hayden Wild requesting to start at the back because it's too congested on that first part of the run. He wants to hit it without getting in the congestion and get a running start. Well, he's going to stand. He's standing back on the right-hand yeah. side of your screen right now, and he's looking around going, yep, you go in front. I want to stay back here so he doesn't get held up at all as they cross, as they round the turn. So he's on the outside at the back, and we're about to start stage two, run, bike, swim. So around the outside, shoulders his teammate out of the way, and it can get congested right there as we see someone have, I think, Stanton stop, trip a little bit. And that out the front is Reese Vanison, who laid down a two-minute lap, seven seconds faster than Alex Yee last week, the 18-year-old, part of Project Podium for the USA Triathlon, and took the run points, and he is out the front again. Chris Perham is there as well. He was the fastest runner and picked up the points last time around. I think that's Roberto sanchez Manticon between No, them. no, it's Vitaly. The, oh, but the it is, you're right. Vitaly Vorontsov. They've been instructed, obviously, those three to chase running points because they've gapped the field. 
And the thing is not to be carried away with that because with no disrespect to them, they will not feature overall in, in this race. And I think the sensible thing is just to sit back a little bit and not go at this pace because this is absolutely flat out. Yeah, so just to give context to that, we don't mention it too much, but there is a team's points race that not only takes in everybody's individual points, but it also takes in points for the top three fastest swims, bikes and runs across the course of stage one and stage two. So that the first two swim, bike and run, you can try to lay down the fastest times, pick up some points to add to the team's total. And there's 300,000 US dollars on the line for the teams this year. So these great single discipline athletes are the ones who are instructed by the team managers to go out there and pick up those points for the team. Wild is the first, I guess, I guess you would call it GC contender yes. who uh, leads the rest. But at the moment, it's a shootout between, I think now, Vanison and Borisov to see who might pick up that time. And Vanison's in the front of this two-man foot race for the team points. We'll see what shakes out as they cross the line. Nick, how's it looking out there for you? Our boys are really showing us what they've got. We knew the Warriors were going to show up today eventually, and the men have really brought it to the table. You can see our lead guy right now just setting that fastest run split again. He's got to hold on to it. We need those points, so we are feeling confident. Nick, thank you. Yeah, Vanison ran a 4.19.1500 metres as a 13-year-old, made the Youth Olympics, and... He's the junior national champion, finished third in the 2022 World Juniors. Stuhlmacher, in fact, was seventh in 2023 when he was sixth. He crosses the line. He's absolutely gassed when he's picked up those points. I want to see that split. We were Hayden Wild third across the line. We're, yeah, GC runner Christian Blumenfeld. Is there anything this guy can't do in four? Sanchez back there for the Scorpions. All a big group coming in now. Madison is totally shot. And fair enough, he has absolutely run his heart out there. And Borisov Wild. and Wild. Now, Wild takes control of this one. Wild will go. We know that. He will not hang around. He'll use his spike skills, and he will be out of here. He's not going to wait for anybody. He lost some time in that opening race to Johnny Brownlee and Leo Bergier, and now he will strike. I'm really surprised that the rest of the pack didn't pick up on that, watching him go out, nailing that. You, you've just got to be so on it when you know that Wild is going to attack a bike course, because out of sight, out of mind on this course, and this is a nice course to be away on your own, and the rest of them in a great big pack on their own. He's gone. And he did this last year as well. Feet out, went straight up hard up the, the rise, which is steeper than it looks on television and disappeared off the front. Now, it was, what, five seconds back to Wild in stage one? All of that's been evaporated now with Brownlee 4.2, Bergier 5.2, and they're all together, and Blumenfeld wants to cross that gap. So, Michael Gilliam will be a little happier as we oh. see someone hit the deck, and it's Taylor Reed. It's Taylor Reed down there who has hit the deck, and he is looking a little tardy, so his partner, Nicole Vanderkay, came off and now Taylor Reed has come off as well so not a good day for the Kiwis with Hayden Wild left holding the hopes but he doesn't look well Taylor Reed and we'll see if we can get a replay of that so let's talk now let's talk now though to, to MG before he realizes that this has happened <laughs> so he's at least happy about something MG MG, we've just seen Taylor Reid unfortunately come down. I know you can't see much from this vantage point as, as the field just come through, but never what we want. Yeah, well, at the moment I got the Falcon off the front. Um, as unfortunately Taylor's come down, uh, it's a story of our world at the moment. It just doesn't seem to be able to catch a break. No matter which way we turn, we turn the wrong way, we do the wrong thing. More my responsibility, huh? Hayden looking brilliant, though. Thank you, MG. Hayden Wild, look at him railing those corners. MG, I know, disappointed, but he should be looking up front because Hayden Wild is going to gap this field. Blumenfeld will be the only one who chases. He only knows one speed, Christian Blumenfeld, and that is flat out. Taylor Reed back on his bike, but Hayden Wild at eight seconds in one lap. We'll have a look at it here, and I think he was on the outside there, potentially, and there Ooh. he is, just came in too hot. Lost that front wheel. Yeah, just onto the, the bricks there, and he is down. The others slow down to get around him, but... The same thing happened to Taylor Reid in this place last year. It was it was just after the transition, lost the front wheel, took out Matt Hauser as well, and he's very disappointed too because he was a podium getter last week and he was on top of the world, and how quickly fortunes can change. 
in Super League Triathlon. Meanwhile, the man with all the technical bike skills comes as a, comes into Super League, came into triathlon as an Xterra world champion, so he's got such good bike skills and he is absolutely hammering it. See how he hugs the wall there? We looked at that yesterday. There's a sort of a vacuum that comes off as the, as the wind hits that wall. It creates a circular vacuum and it's really, really tight in there. Hayden picked that up yesterday as he comes off that corner. He runs right up on that wall. He says it gives him his... He's riding three or four kilometres an hour quicker there. Yeah, so Hayden Wild, as I said, he's had three weeks off, but he's been riding at his home in Andorra. He's actually went on a ride the other day with Tom Pidcock, who, if you follow the Grand Tours, you'll know very well, and Cameron Worth as well. And rode the hills in Andorra just two days ago. So he is on it when it comes to the bike. Berger now 8.2 seconds back and knowing he needs to limit the damage in this stage two to protect some of the lead that he had in stage one. Blumenfeld there or thereabouts as well, just seems to keep going like some kind of machine. Doesn't matter where he is. Another athlete's jumped off the front That's there. Leo Berger. Yeah. His bike skills come into fruition, both Hayden Wild and Leo Berger are probably technically the most astute in this field. With Johnny Brownlee, who's on the front of the chase group. Brownlee and Blumenfeld, so much success between them. Two of the biggest names in the sport. Schoeman sitting there in the top five as well. Kenji Nina having a better day out. Dixon Stapley Ryder, who's also having a better day. And Sanchez is sitting there all in that big group as Matt Hauser looks to avoid getting dropped off the back of it. Berger has put five or six seconds into this group in half a lap. Potentially, World could come into the end of this bike with 20, possibly even 30 seconds if he continues to ride like this because they've still got two laps to go. He did the exact same thing last Fun year. that now, you, I can yeah, hear the bell. You'd think they, had, they would have worked that out. He, he set that run up, as we said before. He wanted to start on the outside to get out of the congestion, set up his transition, and he was gone. So Peugeot has pulled something back. Seven seconds, Johnny Brownlee in third with that big group, 13 seconds down. Schumann's in there as well, Ryder's in there, Nenga's in there, who finished on the podium last year. You need to look at the swimmers now, with the swim finish in this stage, who are going to come out of that second group and close some time down in the, in the swim, because they're not going to do anything on the bike. Leo Bergier, probably not renowned for his strength in the water. Hayden Wild as well. And those two are the ones that have gapped themselves from the field. They are indeed. Bergier and Wild will fight it out in stage three. We'll head down to Tim Don. Berger right up there and in the group behind you amassing as eagles as well. Yeah, the eagles are looking good. You know, you've got to remember that the Scorpions had six athletes um, racing today. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's a massive advantage on those long straights. Um, so it is what it is, but you can see the athletes are racing full gas. Leo wants this. He wants a home win, so he is getting my short shoot. And he's new to the team, relatively. He is very new to the team, and he's here for the rest of the series, so he's only going to grow and get stronger, as is Christian. What a phenomenal. You're not an Olympic champion for nothing. The Eagles are still going to dominate today. Thank you, Tim. Positive chat, isn't it, from, uh, from Tim Don there as Hayden Wild now makes his way into transition. Great smooth dismount from the bike. You watch his transitions. He is silky smooth and silky quick. The fastest by far gone. Oh, his bike's hit the deck. Team manager can pick that up. No he problems. Can. And... Oh, he went the wrong way. <laughs> Silky smooth transition, yeah. says Chris McCormack. Drops the bike, takes a shortcut on the on the swim, gets sent back. Not quite what, would he have, what he would have liked, but regardless. He'd be happy to have open water and clear water. He doesn't have to fight with anyone. Find his technique, find his rhythm. Leo Berger behind has got someone to chase, but not renowned as a big swimmer. This is where the swim power will come from. Look for Henry Schumann in this group in particular. They come bustling down the chute into the water, and that is on the back there, the big easy, Max Stapley, who needs to swim his way around this group if he can at all. Yeah, Hauser and Stapley probably the strongest, but last into the water. Yeah, you need a better swimmer on the front there. No disrespect to the Olympic champion, Blumenfeld, but he's not known for his swim. Nena is, is a great swimmer, but Sanchez more a runner. Schumer needs to swim his way up there and push the pace. Can I see Johnny Brownlee? Yes, I can. 15 seconds, so he's just oh, at the back of that group. Berger swimming remarkably well. He's got that bubbles. He can see through his goggles. The kicking in front of Hayden Wild. He's able to hone in on that. Yeah, and follow yeah. that line to the can. He, so he was seven seconds quicker than Wild the first time they swam, and it looks like he's going to do the same thing here. Seth Ryder gets the Warriors short shoot, and why not? He's having a much better day today, is Ryder, and he is the only Warrior in the top ten. Chase McQueen has fallen out of that as Wild and Berger 
drag race their way to the first boy. And that's interesting because Wild looked like he went a little bit he got far with that right there. Too yeah, far he right. did, and it's enabled the rest of the pack. Almost, almost all the pack. We've got one, two, three, but they're all joining forces now Ooh. with that nice draft. You see that, that current you get. there? You see that current there? Wild went wide on the thing. Leo Bergier got caught up on the. It's on a real the, current that's now, a proper isn't it? Proper current. You can yeah. see that on screen now. Yeah, that's, Bergier stood up for a second and just thought, what am I? What am I swimming into all of a sudden? But it's allowed the other athletes to come back in, hasn't yeah. it, to the race? Yeah, it seems to have picked up a little bit, if anything, from the women's race. And now it's a nicely strung out pack. So all of that advantage that Wild put in with that huge bike leg has evaporated in the first 150 metres of the swim. He went too wide, got pushed wide, and then had to sit up and take a look. And now... The Warriors are up the there. Back is that, of that, yeah, I is think that Ryder? That's, I think that's Ryder. Great swimmer, Seth Ryder. Huge, right. Who, huge swim. And he swam right across the front of Wild there. And he's... <laughs> That, that current, going in different directions. The current is huge. I don't know whether it's not a tide, but it is really coming to play in this race. You see them getting pushed down with it, isn't he? Yeah. And a swim coming in the middle of the next one. So Wild will again head out on the bike, and then he's going to have to hold on and try and see if he can run at home if he's going to win this one. Berger in third. Ryder having no trouble with this whatsoever. It's good to see him back as well. Johnny Brownlee sitting there in around about fourth, fifth position, and then just over there on the far left, that will be Max Stapley, I think. But uh, interesting times in these water. The, the, the conditions have definitely changed since the women's race. So Ryder has made 13 seconds up on this swim in 200 metres in the water, and that is a remarkable swim. As uh, Blumenfeld just off screen there, chopping his way along, trying to stay in touch with the top five. So plenty of wind, plenty of chop, and a fair bit of tidal movement in the water has meant that Seth Ryder has swum his way right back into contention. He said to me yesterday that he's going to have a better race. He had a terrible swim, first swim in London, never got back into it. Kenji he is good there too. And to finish stage two, coming around, it's going to be Ryder who needs to just sprint his way but he's not really doing it. Wild is, though, making sure he doesn't lose any time to stay away from the group. Kenji, swim that was. That's Leo Bergier. Kenji Nina, a great swim. Johnny Brownley. Matty Hauser had a great swim, too, from the back to swim around everybody. Exactly didn't have what he wanted there. Yeah. And uh, McQueen comes back a bit, picks up four places. Blumenfeld loses about six in that swim. And we'll get the times. For stage three, Perham, who went out on that, uh, well, tried to stay with Vanison at the beginning, and Vorontsov couldn't do it. And that second swim, we always see that one blow the field apart, and we've seen it again here. Yeah, it's edge-of-your-seat stuff, isn't it? It's all changing here. Just when you thought the positions were all sorted, they dive into the water. Wild lost all that time. How disappointing with the effort that he put in to that second leg on the bike. And what a stunning, stunning swim from Ryder. Yeah, well, how outstanding for us, though, because if my... If, when I say if my mass is correct, what I mean is I'm looking at the numbers that someone said to me. But uh, um, it looks like Bergier is a couple of seconds ahead of Wild for stage three, with Brownlee, Ryder and Schumann within 10 seconds. Uh, but we'll get a confirmation of that very soon. And there is Leo Bergier. Well, we're going to go down now to Becca. She's with Hayden Wild, who had quite the stage then. Hayden, I'm just going to jump in while you're readying yourself. That bike leg was particularly rapid. Yeah, um, felt good. Um, just hit the corners pretty hard, nearly fell off about twice. Hit the barricade about three times, actually. Did it right in front of my partner, so she was a bit uh, unhappy about that. Um, but having a good time out there. Um, feeling like I'm l l missing a little bit of top end on the on the run, but uh, hopefully that's just coming through the race. How, te how technical is that course? Yeah, it's nice and technical. Eh? I love it. Um, yeah, I thought Leo was going to be behind me uh, the whole race. He loves the technical course, so... Yeah, I'll be watching for him. Thanks so much. My mic is fully sweaty now. Hayden Wild, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly crashed twice, uh, ran into the barriers three times, but yeah, it was sweet as he. That was choice. <laughs> <laughs> he never takes a backward step, does Hayden Wild, and he is going to have his work cut out for him if he is going to deliver the Scorpions a victory in his first time in the red colours. 
and there are plenty of contenders behind him and all of them have deep, deep resumes and that's what Super League racing is all about. There's no doubt about that. Some words from Tim Don to Leo Berger. Let's have a look back at the key moments of this one, the transition onto the bike, first of all, and Vanison. Sorry, onto the run. Vanison was too quick for everyone and then just basically blew the doors off and he was out the back after that. Hayden Wild wasn't too far away though. And after the run onto the bike, it was Vorensov for a second, but then it was Hayden Wild who immediately took control. Taylor Reed had a taste of the tarmac. Someone else, I think it was McQueen there who was very close to going down with him, but we hope Taylor Reed's okay. Just we hope Nicole Vanderkay is all right. But then the rest of the bike was all about watching Hayden Wild tame this course and then forget where he had to go for a second, went around the top of transition as he needed to do, was out the front in the swim, but Seth Ryder had the swim of his life to save, or to bring up 13 seconds on his competitors, cross the line first with Wild not too far behind. And then that shakes us out with Vergier, I think, to lead off in the stage three pursuit start. So the stage has now been set and the confirmation that Berger in front of his home crowd here in France will start two seconds ahead of Wild for the final three disciplines. Brownlee right there, Seth Ryder, great swim from him. He'll start four seconds back from Schumann, the second Scorpion in the top five. Kenji Nina is having a much better race this time around. He's just ahead of his Eagles teammate, Christian Blumenfeld. Dixon and Stapley there sandwiching Chase McQueen. Roberto Sanchez needs the run of his life to stay in contention. Matt Hauser is not having the race he would have liked as he recovers from sickness. And Mark Dubrick is off the back and he may not start this one. So here we go. All the preliminary is out of the way and it is up to these athletes to deliver. And Leo Berger, having missed last week, has the weight of expectation of the home crowd and he'll start first, but it'll be a negligible start, which means that we are going to have a race on our hands. You've got three magnificent cyclists, probably technically the best leading this group out. Leo Berger, Hayden Wild and Johnny Brownlee. If they came to go come together, they're going to shut this field out with a massive bike performance. So Berger, who's your tip here? Berger, Wild, Brownlee, all champions in their own right at the front. Annie, what do you think? Oh, it's going to be fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> right on the fence as we get it underway here in Toulouse. And up goes the boom gate. Berger goes, Wild follows. Then it goes Brownlee, then Ryder. Henry Schumann looking calm. He has to wait a second and he is on. Nina behind him, straight onto the bike, straight over the swim cap. And Berger is... Solid and out, Wild streaking down the black carpet to make sure he hangs on the back beautifully onto the bike there. As is Ryder, Brownlee a little slower and Schumann wants to join that pack because there's a big gap after Nina. Back to Blumenfeld, Dixon and the rest. These gaps matter. This first 500 metres of this bike course will set up the entire last stage for these athletes. You watch them gas it now, especially Hayden Wild who'll try and bring Leo Berger with him and isolate Johnny Brownlee. Yeah, interesting watching uh, Johnny Brownlee take um, the uh, transition there. He, he's favoured that sort of right next to the rails. He wants to get his feet in before he goes up the hill where a lot of other athletes don't. We have one which lo what looks like a mechanical there. Is that? Is that Ryder? That's Seth Ryder. Seth Ryder. Oh, that hurts That's the American and the Warriors. Oh. oh, and he's back on. But after all that hard work, he grinds his gears back at the top of the course. He was right in the box seat too, just off Johnny Brownlee. I don't know what happened there, but whether he came off or just dropped a chain dropped or... A chain. Well, you're coming off that sharp, yeah. sharp, sticky hill and you, you turn right into a left hand, a, a slight downhill. That gear change just can drop the chain. Because it's going to be interesting now, because Wild, I'll tell you what, he's going to take a few risks on this course. He mentioned it in his interview just a few minutes ago, and we can just see now... Oh, oh no, he's, he's come down. down. Oof. Just lost the front one corner before it happened to Taylor Reid. And that hurts, and Henry's, you know, he's on the bubble, he's on the limit rider, and that's what happens. Henry Schumann in fourth knows if he lets this guy, he needs Johnny Brownlee's wheel. Johnny will chase these two in front. Both of them know that the two athletes behind them are better in the water, so, so they need yeah. that gap. 
Schoeman comes in a bit hotter into that corner as they head up the hill to make sure that he can pair up with Brownlee. He doesn't want to see these two get away. And Berger did this in the opening stage. Wild did it in the second stage. That's the point to attack and to really put time into your competition. I tell you what, those legs have got to be burning oh, up that yes. hill. <laughs> I feel for Johnny Brownlee trying to chase down Wild and Leo Berger, but he's not giving up just yet. But Leo Berger. Wow, what a master of this bike course. Wild at the moment just choosing to sit in there, but Johnny Brown is going to have to work pretty hard, and I don't see them pulling back now anytime. It's going to be, uh, I think, Schumann and... Henry won't help a lot. Henry, no, Henry's he going won't. to take Johnny Brownlee's whirl and ride it through. Both these athletes have to eliminate, limit their losses yeah. on this bike ride because they're both better in the water than the two in front. Yeah, so Schumann, you know... He's renowned, or he's been renowned in, in past Ooh. years. For, oh, that was close. <laughs> for, having, <laughs> for having a great swim. He, he, he would feel that he could swim up to the back of Hayden Wild yeah. in that 300 metres, especially given the, the water the way it is. But we'll see how that plays out. We've still got a couple of laps left of this bike. And is that Perham who's been lapped out? Perham, I think, and yeah. And he'll stop at the uh, black carpet up here uh, by virtue of that rule. And there are a couple of others, too, who will stop. And they've been eliminated. Such is the pace at the front as Wilde continues to push his way up this hill in the third lap. And the French crowd continue to push Leo Berger on to not let the Kiwi out of his sights. They are railing it. That gap has opened up. Johnny Brownlee coming around the bottom of that climb. It's about 150 metres, that climb. You can see the gap opening. They know this is all or nothing. Bit of a gap there between Brownlee and Nena now, though. That gap is definitely growing. It's now 13 seconds. We're down now to Rebecca Charlton, who has the managers from the Scorpions and the Eagles. Tim, it's very tight at the front. It is. I mean, you've got the Olympic uh, bronze medalist going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the current world champion in France, who is French. Still all to play for out there, MG. Can you see the tears behind my glasses? At the moment, my heart's bleeding. I've been mauled by teeth, clawed by eagles. I, I'm just getting hammered every which way I go, and now the bitumen's even biting us. I give up. Tears of joy from MG, guys. Thank you so much. He uh, he feels the losses, but it may may he feel the win at the end of this one. Schumann and Brownlee have dropped right off the back, and they'll need the big swim to get themselves into this one. So Wild will know that in this swim he needs to stick to Leo Berger like glue. What, so, a, run. Uh, what a run that'll there. be. What a run cool. that'll be. If it, mm. All things being equal, there's a long, lot of racing to go, but this is really setting itself up for a big race. There's two groups away with the big pack behind. Matty Hauser in that backpack. We're expecting a lot more of that COVID really playing on his strength in this race. And it's interesting that what neither Wild um, or Le Berge, uh, Leo, Le Berge. Le Berge. Le Berge. Le Berge. Le Berge. Um, neither of them raced last weekend in, in London, perhaps coming in here with slightly fresher legs than Schumann and uh, Brownlee, who both, of course, raced last weekend. But these guys, I don't think anyone could beat them on any day on this course with the way they're riding. Wow. And defence of Henry Schumann, he's taken a pull on the front, at least when they came over the timing mats. <laughs> Maybe because they're coming over the timing mats. Just to prove you wrong, Blumenfeld leading a pack of four. Nina Dixon McQueen, so a couple of eagles in there, a shark and a warrior uh, in that fifth to eighth position as Matt Hauser continues to leak time off the back. Just doesn't have the extra 5% that he needs. Hayden Wilde has four seconds on Berger in the previous run splits. So we have a look at where the short shoot is when they come to the run. Two laps of the run, two short shoots to be taken. Probably adds up to about a five-second benefit. And you heard Tim say that's going to Leo Berger, so... That'll be interesting. That'll That's be true. Interesting. That could be what changes things because the Scorpions do not have a short shoot to hand out. Of course, the other one goes to the Warriors and to Seth Ryder. I'm just noticing that Leo Berger is taking his shoes out, his feet out of his shoes. What's no? happened here? He thought it was the end of was. the race. He thought it was the end of the fight. Yep. And he's uh, made a, a monumental... Oh, hang on, what's going on here? It is the end of the bike. It is the bell lap. Wild's gone on an extra lap. Oh, oh no. no! 
Wilde's forgotten. He's got to go back. Oh, wow. Well, just looking at we screen, heard the bell. Just looking at our screen, it looks like we've got a fourth lap to go. But... He might be disqualified for that. We will see because, I mean, we saw it happen to Vincent Lewis last year in World Triathlon Racing, and now it's happened to Hayden Wilde. He's got his lap numbers wrong, and MG is ropeable. Dear, oh dear, he's throwing the cap, can't take a trick. Now he's got to go round the back, and he's on the back of a pack with Chase McQueen. That is terrible. Is there a bell lap? I didn't see that. I, I think we saw the bell at one point. Yeah, I definitely no, 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 Now the goggles have come off, and the, the wheels have come off the Scorpion's charge. All will be revealed, but at the moment, <laughs> I'm not sure what oh. happened there. I thought there was one lap to go. Well, the graphics at the bottom of the screen said one lap to go, but we'll get a confirmation. That was that was confusion. There was a lot of confusion. Hayden Wild rarely makes mistakes like that, so. Well, according to the clock times, it's possible that they shouldn't have finished the bike yet. So, we'll see what's going on here. MG seems convinced there's a lap to go. He's talking to Michael Thompson, the race referee. Oh, not very happy, MG. Yeah, apologies for the language there, but you get what you get with MG. <laughs> and uh, Berger, meanwhile, is out the front, continuing. And that's Henry Schumann who's put himself back in this race with a big swim. He could close in this gap on Leo Berger without question. An amazing swimmer under fatigue, Henry Schumann, with someone to chase. Johnny Brownlee will tag those feet if he can. Short shoot allocation down below there, Seth Ryder takes it and Leo Berger will take that for the Eagles. What a tragedy for Hayden Wilde, who looked on amazing form uh, today. OK, so I do have some insight into what happened there um, because we had athletes that they were just overtaking as they headed into transition. The one board was still up for those athletes who still had a lap to go. The bell oh. did ring and they did do four laps. But the one board for the lapped athletes confused Hayden Wild. Oh. Wow. And he went through transition only to realise halfway up the slope that he had done four they laps already. They shouldn't be lapped athletes. They were going to be pulled off anyway. I guess they should. They were going to be pulled off. They just after just transition. At that transition yeah. point. Yeah. Oh, that's a tragedy. Racing error. There we go, though. But it is about the French man now in the water being chased down by the Commonwealth Game champion. Olympic bronze medalist. Olympic bronze medalist. Oh, what it a resume. doesn't have a bad run has. either. So the short shoot still goes to Berger only uh, in terms of this front group. And the last time we're probably going to see the QR code. So predict now. If your prediction was Hayden Wild, change your prediction. Look at Henry. Because Leo Berger and Henry Schumann. He's bringing that kick in, Henry Schumann. He wants to close that gap if he can come into transition. Johnny Brownlee just been gapped. You see Henry's six-beat kick come in just about, you know, 15, 20 metres ago, and that gap's closed to Leo Bergier. Schumann's gotten better as this race has, really has gone have. on. And I'm not sure where people are voting for Matt Hauser. But uh, out on the water comes Bergier, and now we have a two-kilometre run to finish things. And can Henry Schumann find another gear? He looks behind him and sees Johnny Brownlee, who's been running immensely well. But the only person with a short shoot is Berger. Now, the short shoot here in Toulouse, not as big an advantage as we've seen at other races, but that does happen twice. Building to it, you have to building to it. Dixon, McQueen, Nina, 20 seconds back. Wild, I think you can count him out based on the firepower at the front. And it's Brownlee, Schumann and Berger. The crowd well behind the Frenchman. Hayden Wilde just through transition now, and he's looking at damage limitation. And he struggles with his shoe. Things have gone completely wrong for the Falcon. And how do you recover after that? He'll have a massive run, Hayden Wilde. Yeah. He never quits this never. kid. He, he will dig in and try and take as many athletes out on this two-kilometer run. You know, I predict him in fourth. And I think he'll overtake everyone he's in front of him. He's out with Blumenfeld. It'll be a great race. The Olympic champion versus the Olympic bronze medalist. Can he make up six seconds to vault himself back from seventh? into potentially fourth position. I say yes. Yeah, I think he probably, you know, he's got a good chance if anyone can do it. Meanwhile, out the front, Berger is controlling this race and Brownlee has caught up to Schumann. Yeah, he has. He's made up those few seconds he left in the water, but Leo Berger striding away by the looks of things. But Johnny Brownlee definitely not giving up as he overtakes the South African athlete. Henry Schumann had a glance back. Bad move, bad move. 
He needs to run off the shoulder of Johnny Brownlee. All right, now suddenly there's clear air behind Leo Berger and Tim Don will be very happy about it, no doubt. There was confusion there, big confusion for Hayden Wild, but not for you. Yeah, I mean, the crowd were going wild. I could see them slowing down and I could see Leo looking at me and I was going to stop. I heard the bell, I saw the lap, lap sign, the one before. He listened, he got off, dismounted. Man, it moves at 1,000 miles an hour, this game. It really does. There's so much in their head already. And tell us about the short shoot. I mean, I'm so chuffed. You know, there was a no-brainer to give it to Leo. You know, it means a lot. This is his first race of the season. I want him to take this advantage, this feeling of a home race onto Malibu and onto Neon, on the grand final. Um, it's not over yet. He's got an Olympic medalist chasing him. Thank you. Johnny Brownlee has overtaken Henry Schumann, relegated him to third position currently. And you'll see him come into shot at the back there. There he is. He doesn't get to take the short shoot. And I think does that, that gap looks too big. Does, do, would you yeah. not agree? Yeah, too, the gap's too, too big. big. Leo, Leo's in control. He's composed. Johnny Brownlee will not give up the chase, but he knows that Henry Schumann has a fight in that second lane. Henry gets better as these distances go longer. He needs to get that gap open and break Henry's spirit, which he's doing right now. You can see Johnny Brownlee really putting down the hammer now. Just to get back over Leo Berger's career as well in Super League, we started back well at first race in 2017 in Hamilton Island, but the real series starts in 2018. Leo Berger was sixth there and then tenth in 2019. And then he had a big gap. Do you remember in Singapore when he ran yeah, without any shoes on? I was just about on. to bring that up. He's famous for the barefoot running in Singapore. That set that race yeah, well, he's, up he's also, he's Now it's called the Berger rule that everyone has to run with shoes on <laughs> yeah. because his shoes looked like mincemeat by the end of that run. Oh, he stuck it out, didn't he? He did. He did, he did indeed. Ten seconds. Seconds. Brownlee has gone right past Henry Schumann and now he's gonna he's looking at a 7.6 second gap. But Leo Berger is running with the entire population of Toulouse behind him. They saw Jean Leher, the other eagle, get disqualified in the women's race, and now the redemption for France, unless Johnny Brownlee can spoil the party with one of the great wins. Now Brownlee, and there is Wild, who comes around the corner, but Brownlee has finished second so many times in this racing. It's obscene. <laughs> it's obscene. But it, I'm just looking back at Wild v Blumenfeld, which is the race I want to see, and whether Wild can close in on Nina, Nina and Dixon. It's at six seconds to, to grab those points. We're talking about series points here, so for teams, and there's a lot on the line for these team races, and that's what the managers are screaming about. Every position counts. You've got these podium places here set up. Johnny Brownlee just doesn't stop fighting, does he? He really does. Never quits. You did say Wild would run into fourth eventually. That was your prediction. We've just seen him coming around the corner now on the heels of Dixon. He's overtaken Nana. What a phenomenal run. And I love the fact that he just hasn't thrown his toys out of the pram and yeah. given up on this race. Running himself now but past Daniel Dixon, who's oh, looking oh, very fatigued oh, indeed, oh, isn't he? Look at Wild. He's so angry. Look at the anger on the Falcon's he's, face. He is hating every minute of he's this. He's going wild. He is going wild. That's absolutely correct he's made an error he is going to limit the damage and he's going to run on pure rage fumes for the next 700 meters and he'll probably put down the fastest run lap on his way there too purely because of that mistake he knows he should have won this race but instead it's probably going to be leo berger who we cut to now heading down the hill he'll take the short shoot once again brownlee's not close enough and again the double short shoot for berger there is Brownlee in the back of shot where he has been. And now 500 metres to go and Leo Berger will win this race. Johnny Brownlee will lead the championship into Malibu. That's absolutely brilliant for Johnny Brownlee, isn't it? Finishing second in London, second uh, barring any disaster here today. That Schumann who's behind him would expect to see Wild pretty soon coming under the bridge as he does now. Uh, you've got to hand it to Wild, haven't you? He's going to pick up some really vital points for the Scorpions who are going to have a pretty good day in the men's race. Not a bad day. I don't know what MG's concerned about. I think both the women and the men have been amazing. The Eagles have been tough to beat, but Leo Berger, first race of the series and just dominated all day. His bike handling is amazing, his runs are impressive. He has, Leo Berger, he absolutely loves it. The 2022 European champion, the 2022 world champion. He won already plenty of times this year and now he adds a win at home in Toulouse. Leo Berger, first race of the season, first win of the season. Johnny Brownlee in second position again, but will lead the championship with Alex Sheen not here. And Henry Schumann from seventh last week to third this week, a big swim in the third stage, puts him into it. And Hayden Wild 
comes across the line in fourth and he will be very disappointed. Dixon fifth, improves on his position last week and straight off he goes to talk to the officials. Right here, he rang the bell, the one that side was up. Timmy Donaldson as well. Bitterly disappointed. Such a winner, Hayden Wild. He rang it. Yeah, I know he did. Why do you ring it again? What do you mean? He rang it. He rang it with one left to go for you guys. He rang it. He doesn't like it, Hayden Wild, but it looks like it could have been just a racing incident. As we say always, there's so much going on down there. There was lapped athletes coming across the line. The one board was still up for them. And that's where the management comes in. That's where the manager comes in, like Tim Don did and said, Leo, slow down. Yep. And that, that's the role of a manager. He's picking up the pieces now, but that time was lost. We'll head down now to the black carpet. Calm and consistent throughout the entirety of that race. You must be delighted. Yeah, I think uh, I've made the right choices during the, the free stages uh, today. And uh, yeah, I can't thank enough uh, Team Don, uh, the team captain, and uh, my uh, yeah my teammates uh, in the Eagles. Was there some confusion at the end of that last bike leg? Yeah, I was about to uh, to go down off my bike because I knew it was the f the, the last lap, and I uh, I heard uh, Hayden shouting at me uh, that uh, it w uh, we had uh, still w one more lap to go, so I I came down a bit too late, and I saw him pass me like this, so. I was really confused and I think he was uh, as well. So, yeah, I'm really sorry for him uh, because we didn't have the battle we, we wanted in the last stage. But, uh, yeah, it's part of racing and uh, I'm sure he will, uh, he will be good in, uh, in the last uh, two stages. Thank you so much. Huge congratulations once again. <laughs> Johnny, sorry to steal, steal you away. There's such a solid race uh, to secure the podium. Can you talk us through it? Uh, yeah, another tough one, a good first race, and uh, I lost my front wheel on the corners on the uh, second leg, and that kind of spooked me a little bit. Uh, but Leo was just too strong on the bike today. He was riding unbelievably well, and uh, he deserved the win. And uh, not sure what's going on, Hayden, but uh, I was pleased to see him running back towards me. I was stood here in transition, and honestly, the pace you came through uh, every single lap on the bike leg and into that turn, it's a mightily technical course, isn't it? Uh, it's a very technical course. I think pretty much the last couple of rounds, every time I went around a corner, there was someone in a barrier on the floor somewhere. Um, so much of it is about staying on your bike and staying calm and actually just getting around. Uh, you know, anyone can throw it into a corner. Anyone can go into a corner too quick, but can you get around safely? And uh, that was actually quite hard work today. Well, you look fresh. Thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations on securing a third step of the podium. How was it out there? It's so fast and furious. Yeah, it's very fast and furious. It really, it really is hard. Uh, but I enjoy this kind of racing, and it's so nice to be back on a Super League podium. How hectic are these transitions? Oh, you've got to be so fast, and I think that's where I capitalise on this race is... Uh, I made sure that I was quickest in transition and that makes the biggest difference in the race. Congratulations once again, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at the story of that last stage and back here before all the drama, out they went uh, first of all onto the bike and Berger was on first but Hayden Wild was right on his wheel and then it was the pair behind them of Schumann and Brownlee after Ryder hit the deck, and that was what Johnny Brownlee mentioned, just staying on your bike was what it was all about. These two were stuck together like glue, though, for this entire bike period. And Berger and Wilde, just two of the greatest bike handlers. Unfortunately, Wilde went one lap too long. Berger did not make that mistake, and suddenly Hayden Wilde's race was done and dusted as he headed back down transition asking for some kind of clarification, but he had no recourse. Suddenly he was 20 seconds down. There goes the hat from Michael Gilliam. And Leo Berger did not let that ruffle him and he would run his way to a big, big victory in front of his home crowd, which is exactly 
what they wanted to see. Johnny Brownlee second. He will lead the championship heading into Malibu. And Henry Schoeman, I think, will vault himself up into second position overall. Well, just have to let the dust settle on that one. There'll be plenty of storylines to come out of it. Leo Berger wins well and plenty of great performances throughout. And one of them was Dan Dixon. And Dan right now is with Rebecca Charlton. Third in the men's podium. How happy are you with today's performance? Oh, man, I mean, that was awesome. I mean, that's, uh, that is one of the best races I've ever put together. But two in two weeks, so clearly the form was there. Um, but yeah, no, it was awesome. I loved it. I came here last year and probably made a mistake going out too hard on the first round and blew up my race. But um, yeah, this year I was a lot more tactical, strong, and yeah, just staying away from making mistakes, you know, careful on the corners, careful in the transitions. But no, I felt good. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty awesome. You know, I was sprinting Olympic gold medalist at the end. It's, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that, does it? It really doesn't. And just very quickly, when Hayden Wilde went for another bike lap, did that make you doubt yourself? I didn't even know he went for another bite lap, but yeah, I heard that he had a penalty and uh, yeah, I tried to push the run because I knew at some point he was going to come back. Um, I tried to stay on him for about five metres, but couldn't hold on. Uh, listen, yeah, yeah. thank you so much. We'll see you later on. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, good to see Dan Dixon, who's been part of this the last couple of years, do so well. And the results from the men's triple mix in the end, it was eight seconds between Berger and Brownlee, the Frenchman and the Englishman for the Eagles and the Sharks. And then a pair of Scorpions, Schumann and Wilde, who will rue that mistake to finish fourth overall. And then Dan Dixon finishing in the top five, which is a great result from him, from Nina and Blumenfeld, who just keeps contending all the way throughout, whether it's Super Sprint all the way up to Ironman. Uh, McQueen finishing eighth overall in the end to add to his ninth in London. Hauser in ninth. And then Roberto Sanchez, who finishes in the top 10, a full 90 seconds back for a man of his class. Shows you how much the pace was on. So the championship series overall, six points now to Johnny Brownlee. Schumann, as predicted, vaults his way up into the top two. And Dan Dixon will sit in third overall as we head to Malibu in three weeks' time. Roberto Sanchez, he could have added more there. He'll be disappointed with that after his fourth overall last week. Alex Yi obviously didn't add to his total, while Leo Berger added the 15 to his total for, for his total, sorry, for the race win. McQueen also on 15, so nothing between fifth and seventh, and then very close, eighth, ninth, and tenth as well. Taylor Reed coming off, so after his third, he doesn't add to that either. It's time to head down now to the medal presentations and a big crowd to watch medal a French champion be crowned for the, the first time race. in Toulouse. Please welcome the medalists. The medals will be presented by Leonid Boguslavsky, chairman, the chairman of Super League, of Super League Triathlon, 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 who has never missed a Super League race except for Toulouse here last year. Made sure he was here this year. He will hand out the medals. And Johnny Dunal, the deputy town councillor of Toulouse, is going to be part of the ceremony as well. Schumann, who always seems to race better with his family around him. His 18-month-old is here in Toulouse, and as is his wife, Franzel, and he rewards their support with a podium. One of the stalwarts of Super League Triathlon. Finished second in the series, as has Johnny Brownlee. Finished second in the series, finished second today as well. He's used to chasing Frenchmen for a long time. It was Vincent Lewis, and this time it's Leo Berger, but another well-earned second place for the three-time Olympic medalist. In first place, and 2023 Super League Triathlon Championship Series Toulouse winner from France, representing Santara Tech Eagles, Les Bergers. Taking the win for the Eagles and enjoying every minute of it. Leo Berger, and don't the crowd love it as well. As the medals and the champagne get handed out here on a beautiful day, in the Pink City. And again, thank you to Marie de Toulouse, Toulouse Metropole and the Occitanie region for their support and for being so welcoming to our athletes and supporting them in such a way. Such an amazing city. Great energy here, great crowds and a great day put on with the help of the local triathlon clubs as well. It's 
been a fantastic one. And don't they love seeing a Frenchman on the top of the podium? Three different teams, three different nationalities, all three extremely accomplished athletes, Olympic medalists and world champions. And there is Hayden Wilde on the right-hand side with a questionable tattoo, watching on and knowing he should be up there. So the racing as it was ended up with the Sharks not extending their lead, but holding their lead. And the Bahrain Victoria Scorpions, thank you very much to Henry Schoeman, especially up to second overall from the Eagles and the Warriors. But it is very tight. The Warriors with a better result than hoped. And that basically wraps us up from the racing here, but it continues in Malibu in three weeks' time. And what an end to the series it will be in the next two rounds. So what a race. Toulouse always turns on plenty of controversy, the technical course, the big crowds, the small margin for error, and you either win or die trying, as they say, and plenty of people found themselves on the wrong side of that equation, and we hope they certainly that they are okay, but there are plenty more who tasted that scent of victory, and that is because they put everything out there on the line, which is what we require here at Super League Triathlon if you are indeed going to end up with a race victory. So... Johnny Brownlee did it, Henry Schumann did it, and Leo Berger, and of course the, the race in the women was not anywhere near as close. Kate Woff was absolutely superb. And that is exactly what we're gonna talk about first of all. It was a fantastic women's race, so time to review that now. We're gonna head down now to Rebecca Charlton, who is going to help us wrap up what was an incredible race in the women's. And I'm delighted that Michelle Dillon joins me now, understandably beaming. Now, I want to cast your mind back to a spectacular edition of the women's race, the triple mix, which is quite crazy to watch, isn't it? It's just brilliant. Kate Woff put in a stunning performance, but let's just go back to stage one. Talk us through it and how it played out. Yeah, look, I mean, our team came in today to stay in front on the team's leaderboard, and we've done that successfully because we had a consistency throughout the women's event with the Sharks team. We, it was just literally on from the gun, and Kate, we talked about the race before the, um, before the start this morning, and we talked that she's going to maximise her opportunities where, where they are on the bike. She's such a strong biker. She, she's won the under-23 World Championships by getting away on the bike, and she did that here today. Uh, we didn't expect maybe to be, for her to be so far ahead as she was, but honestly, the confidence is just built right up now for the next round. What I was going to say, I really hope it has because she's so modest and she said a similar thing as you did about that bike gap, saying didn't actually realise I was so far ahead. Well, exactly. I mean, she's never been on the podium here at Super League Triathlon, so to get on the top of the podium, not even get a third or a second, but to actually go straight to the top is a phenomenal effort from Kate. And, you know, we, we, we as a team, we've inbuilt self, self-belief uh, with the team over the, the last few days and it's obviously paid off and worked. Um, she's a phenomenal athlete but a lot of it comes down to that deep-seated belief, convicting it and actually putting it, you know, into play on race day and that's what really counts and she did that today. Oh, she certainly did. Now, I'm just going to turn to the man beside me, Tim Dunn. I mean, you're taking a bit of a deep breath there. What a spectacular day. If I could take you right back to the beginning, to stage two of the women's race. It's been a mixed day for you. Jan Leher was in such a strong position and then big disappointment. Absolutely. I mean, the race was set up for um, the uh, pursuit format. It was going to be the Sharks against the Eagles. Rules are the rules. You know, the helmet wasn't done up, so she did it up. But the rule is you have to go back to your transition absolutely heartbroken but I've said this before this series moves at 100 miles an hour and the athletes they sometimes don't have time to think heartbroken for her but I know she'll be back 
and transitions can make such a huge difference at this level. We think of it as being maybe something you need to learn at the beginning of the sport, but it's make or break. Absolutely. I mean, it's the fourth discipline because, you know, the, the, the running, the swimming, the biking, they're so close. It's how they mentally approach the transitions. I call it controlled aggression. They really need to go in focus, going bang, bang, bang. And you make a small mistake in this game, whew, you get punished. Oh my goodness. Well, Michelle, let's now move on to talk a little bit more about stage three and how that played out for Wolf. Yeah, well, obviously, I then gave the short shoot to Kate, uh, thinking that, you know, if she's going to have a really good, strong, you know, race on her hands here with Jeanne Leher, um and Taylor Spivey was up there at the time. And I thought, OK, for sure, to guarantee a podium, let's make sure that we give her the short shoot. But then, obviously things really change very quickly and Super League triathlon, like Tim said, and all of a sudden you find Kate off the front with a massive gap. And, you know, Olivia Mateus also fair play to her. She was right up there having a solid race today. She didn't feel the best, but she still delivered a great result with fourth place. Um, you know, but then unfortunately for the Eagles team, Jeanne got that penalty and that then put her con out of contention. And it was just really Kate just making sure that she gets off the bike with no mechanicals or anything and just cruising to a really nice easy win which is very rare in Super League triathlon let me tell you. Well it certainly is I can totally agree with that. Tim what are your biggest observations for the women's field looking ahead to Malibu? We got these young women coming through and taking control we got Fanny getting a top 10 we got Kate Woff who last year you would never said she'd win and I think that was the largest winning margin um, we've ever seen in Super League for a woman. Going to Malibu, you know, we've got a nice four week. Everyone can go back home. Some people to altitude to their home bases. A nice easy week. They're going to be re-watching this race and London to learn those small things. We've thrown the surf in Malibu. It is going to be great. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. We cannot wait, Michelle, Tim. Thank you so much. All right, great insights there from Michelle Dillon and from Tim Don, both of whom are very happy, and why not? Race winners amongst them and a championship lead as well. And as we look at the athlete leaderboard after this round, it uh, is completely different to what it was before. And now Lahair has dropped halfway down, and instead at the top, Kate Woff puts herself in contention as well. And it's going to be all to play for when it comes to Malibu. There is no doubt about that whatsoever and uh, we're going to head down right now to Annie Emerson who is with our race winner Kate Woff. <gasps> Kate has it sunk in yet you are the champion here in Toulouse how does it feel? Yeah it feels amazing um, the crowds are just incredible today so they were pushing me every lap of the bike when I was just trying to drill it and yeah so so happy <laughs> let's talk about that bike because you look pretty awesome on the bike but you were taking a few risks yeah yeah i think especially on the first two rounds i just want to try and push and like not think about the rounds coming afterwards so yeah I, I really pushed it and then on the last couple of laps of the last round i was like okay i just need to stay on my bike now <laughs> I don't want to fall off now. That would be a bit embarrassing. <laughs> there was kind of a lot going on in the race, as there always is here, because it's a technical course. But then we had the situation with Jan Lahair. Were you aware of what was happening? Yeah, I saw her helmet come undone um, when we were leaving transition. And I was like, I noted it because I thought she would get a penalty. Um, I didn't expect it to be disqualified so yeah I was a bit gutted because I wanted like a battle and yeah I feel like it would have been good to battle right to the end but I like to think I would have still got it. <laughs> Let's just look ahead quickly to uh, four weeks time and uh, Malibu you have put yourself in a brilliant position and how does that feel and what are your thoughts of the Malibu course you've raced there before? Yeah, I'm excited. I really enjoyed Malibu last year. I love the ocean swim, so that's going to be really cool. Yeah, and just going to get my head down in training and, yeah, try and do the same again, I guess. <laughs> Congratulations. We're all very proud of you. What a fantastic first victory. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, a real coming of age there for Kate Woff, and she'll be very happy with that, and she'll be very happy with her lead going into Malibu. Three Brits and three Sharks in the top three, if you can believe that. War, Matthias, Fulliger, the next generation really stepping up. Verena Steinhauser off the back of consistency is in fourth, and Jean Lahair off the back of that disqualification drops from first to fifth alongside Leonie Perio. And that means 
that at that point, the team leaderboard, well, the Sharks had hit the 200 mark and the Scorpions, they moved themselves up from fourth into second, sorry, from third into second. The Eagles, who were much vaunted going into this one, stay in fourth, and the Warriors picked up more points than expected as we head back down now to Rebecca Charlton for a roundup of the men's. Well, I'm delighted that joining me once again down here is Tim Don and Michelle Dillon. Welcome back. Cast yourself back to that such fast and furious men's race and the very beginning. It was a strong start for your team. Absolutely. They had great first swim and this river current, it can really play havoc. We didn't have the best pontoon position, but they did really well. And that first bike, the pace was on. Um, and yeah, they rode well, smooth transitions onto the run. And then they had like three minutes to do it all again. But they set themselves up there for a great race. But you can just see they're broken. This is brutal. I was amazed at how calm the athletes looked in those sort of three, roughly three minute breaks in between. Do you think it's a good thing that they stop? I mean, it's just so hectic. Having raced this series many years ago, it's probably want a 10 minute rest, but that's not <laughs> going to happen. Three minutes is neither here nor there. Their mind's going, oh, what order are we doing? Are we doing it this way, that way? This is the triple mix, man. It gets mixed up all the time. Um, so yeah, they need a calm head. We saw some crucial mistakes from both top men and top women today, which affected their overall performance and end position. Well, Michelle, Johnny Brownlee had such a fine day. I think he's just such a calm looking athlete, isn't he? Tell us about how he got on in stage two. Yeah, look, he did super well. I did expect him to get on the podium today, but with a, such a drama-filled men's race, wow. I mean, there was so much to think about with, you know, Hayden riding through the transition area, Leo Berger and himself together. And then I think Johnny looked up and I was like, opportunity, take it. And he did. And I said, like, you know, there's a second place there, if not a, a first place, if you just believe in yourself. The gap was probably just a little bit too big to peg back. But, you know, I can't be happier with my team. Again, really consistent. Dan Dixon again up there as well in fifth position, gaining valuable points for our team. And we're still in front now. So I'm just super delighted about that. Well, there was chaos. It was hectic. How do you keep a cool head? Were you in any doubt at any point whether there was one more bike lap? Yeah, look, I mean, you, as a team manager, you've got a lot to think about. You know, you're thinking about the transitions, trying to make sure the athletes are all got everything they need, and, and that gets tough out there. Um, but, you know, if anyone has to stay calm, it's me. Even if it's just on the outside, um, I did my best to stay as calm as possible, but try to give the athletes some feedback whilst they're racing as well. Valuable feedback, which always helps. Um, you know, like, make sure you put everything in the box, guys. You know, da -da -da -da. how many seconds have you got the lead and stuff like that? And it really does make a difference. Well, Tim Don, a word quickly on just how hectic that stage was. Uh, it was just all over the place, you know, and for Leo to, to race so strong in front of his home crowd, you know, he was racing the race that was in front of him, and that's all we can ask. I mean, you know, there was lots of yo-yo going in on there, but he never gave up and he fought to the end. But, you know, as Michelle said, you know, we had the world champion, an Olympic gold medalist, an Olympic bronze medalist on the podium. This is where the sport's at. This is where it's at. And was there any discussion going on with Bajer and any potential penalty during that chaos? Um, during the chaos, it happened so quick. I knew they were on their last lap, so it was like, yep, you've got to get off your bike. Um, Hayden went past. He got, he got told to stop and come back as quick as possible. Um, you know, but I always say you race to the referee's whistle. So Hayden got a penalty, and he took that f absolute fair play. No one gave Leo a penalty, so he raced to the, um, the head referee, and that's all you can do as an athlete. You can't tell a referee how to do his job, and, uh, you know, so fair play to Leo. Super happy for him. And let's be honest, we needed the points after the Sharks. I mean, man, I'm going to call them the Land Sharks now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, talking of... <laughs> <laughs> the tenacious activity of the Sharks. How are you reflecting on the day as a whole? Well, look, if we can... I said if we come to Toulouse and we can stay in front here, we've got a bloody good chance of really genuinely winning this thing because, you know, we were losing three key players this weekend and uh, they're probably at home watching this right now, guys. Our team did well, as you saw. And, you know, I'm just going to be super pumped going into Malibu, as, as are the athletes. We're still going to stay hungry. We've got to stay focused. That's really important because, you know, you, we can never get, like I said last week, you can never get complacent with any of these results because things happen very quickly in Super League Triathlon. It can change very quickly. But we're in a really strong position, and I'm delighted, and I couldn't be happy as, as the Sharks team manager, to be honest. And Michelle, as ever, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, she should be delighted. The Sharks remain on top, having taken 200 points. And there is the leaderboard after stage 
uh, after round two, sorry. Jonathan Brownlee on top and how about that? Two Brits in the top three and two Sharks in the top three. So nearly an entire sweep of the top three on the leaderboard by the men's and women's in the Sharks and all GB athletes if it wasn't for Henry Schoeman's third that put him into second position. Sanchez and Yi, your top five. Berger, McQueen, Nina Stapley and Taylor Reid who didn't add to his points as we head down now to Annie who's with Henry Schoeman. Henry, congratulations. It has been a long way back from injury and sickness, and it is great to see you mixing it up with the very best in the world, finishing on the podium here today. How are you doing? Oh, I'm feeling just so great right now. Um, as you said, it's been a really tough couple of years uh, with the ankle break and then an elbow break just before last year's season. Uh, to be back, you know, London, it was kind of like not really my day, but coming here and being on the podium, it's just so good to be back on a Super League podium, and I'm just looking forward to the rest of the series. We were talking earlier, there is so much that goes on in this sort of racing here in Toulouse. How do you keep your head together? Oh, you just got to think in the moment. You can't uh, think too far ahead or think about what happened behind you. You just kind of have to keep going. Uh, keep focused, keep uh, concentrated, and uh, yeah, think about the next step, but uh, giving it full gas the whole way. And the crowds finally here in Toulouse, incredible. Oh, so incredible with the crowd. Thank you everyone for coming out and cheering us. It really pushes us to our absolute limit, and I think they got some really good racing out of it. Oh, well, congratulations. We are ecstatic to see you back on the podium. Thank you so much. I look forward to more. Yeah, why not? It's been, as he says, a long way back for Henry Schoeman. Um, and it's been a little way back for the Bahrain Victoria Scorpions who move into second position, but just five points ahead of the Santara Tech Eagles in their battle for second. And also to chase down the Sharks who went to 230 points off the back of this as we head back down now to Becker to wrap it up. Tim, we're hearing there's been an appeal from maybe two teams. Can you tell us the conversation you've just had? This is so fluid at the moment. So, yeah, there's been an appeal, uh, two appeals, because um, Leo rode with the incident with um, um, Hayden Wild. Um, he, d he went over the mount line. Um, but as I said, um, Leo raced to the referee. Hayden got shown a penalty and he took his five seconds. Leo did not get shown a penalty, so he carried on racing. Um, that's all I know now. The appeal will still be out there. Um, I'm sure the head referee and the committee will decide the end result. But, um, man, it's just full gas. <laughs> certainly is. Tim, thank you so much for the insight. We're going to let you, I don't know, sit down, have a drink, something. No, I, I, need, I need to run to burn this energy off. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. Go run, run. Tim, thank you so much. Now, the wonderful Annie Emerson joins me now. I think we all need to get our breath back I, I need a that. drink. I need I, a drink. I think we'll go for a drink. <laughs> but how are you reflecting? It was just a mad day, but brilliant. It was a crazy day, but I love it. I love to lose. I love the course. I love the fact that it is so challenging. Chatting with Henry there there is so much for the athletes to think about but I think yes there were some crashes there were some mishaps but on the whole what an amazing race there were some key people missing today and they're back from Malibu talk they, us through it oh my gosh Malibu is going to be amazing the ocean swim I just love it it's a beautiful place we're going to have Yi back we're going to have Potter back so many of the good athletes are going to be back in fact everyone's going to be back racing it is going to be a blinder Annie, I absolutely can't wait. We need a lie down first. Thank you so you much as ever for all the insight <laughs> today. And we will be back with all the action from Malibu on the 30th of September. Make sure you join us then. Bye-bye for now.